oh, this thing rolling. They say we good. That's <laughs> what I want to hear. It's your boy. Protocol check it in. It's y'all. It's November 3rd. Boy, December is here. We about to be in January 1st all over again for a whole nother year. We is at the last Friday. It's the last weekend before everything is slated to change in the city of Savannah. I hope y'all ready. And I hope y'all own y'all Spike Lee and doing the right thing. Because listen, was well, some tumultuous times now. I'm trying to told you. We yeah. gonna talk about it. Plus, you know, we on the on the edge of World War Three, and uh, it's a lot of things coming out, boy, boy, boy. Yeah. Listen, y'all get mad at me when I hop in on them Democrats, but listen, I got some stuff for y'all tonight. We gonna talk about it. We gonna talk about it. But first, you know how your boy Pro do. Got to kick it off right with some music, man. My dog Todd Rose is in the building. I got uh Robert What's Bryant up? coming through. I got Rashida Edwards coming. Listen, it's a good night. Plus, the phone lines is wide open. Oh, we on the night, man. Friday night flights, <laughs> man. We getting ready to take off. Let's go ahead and jump into some music, though. It's my dog Smooth, aka your fave musician. And you can uh you can find him on YouTube under your fave musician. Go ahead and uh check him out. Uh, this is off his uh latest project. The lunch break. The track is called Stay in Focus, Stay in Free, man. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's go. <laughs> stay in focus, stay in free. Uh, stay in focus, stay in free. That's all we gotta do. Stay in focus, stay in free. Yeah. Stay in focus, stay in free. Look. Trying to finesse the game two times. Wake up early to grind. My hands together to find my peace. I repeat to all my brothers deceased. But I don't get upset about it. I just shop in my crease. Pristine, nice looking. I knew that as a teen. I'm staring, looking at the skies, thinking, what do it mean? My aura and my rep, I'm trying to keep it all clean. I'm spitting like the black mamba just to keep it a bean. I'm in the kitchen cooking up, trying to make you a fiend. You over here or over there? Ain't no in between for this paper. I'm on a hunt. Like my name was Kareem I'm the flyest brown chief that this world ever seen Uh, get it by any means My only favorite color is the green Stay in focus, stay in free The hustle is in my jeans But still know how to keep the fit clean Stay in focus, stay in free I can see it, it's in my dreams Baby, I'ma make it for the team Stay in focus, stay in free I'm just trying to get that cream Cash rules, everything around me Stay in focus, stay in free yeah, yeah, stay in focus, stay in free. Yeah, yeah, stay in focus, stay in free. Him raps filled with that. I'm real skilled at rap. This new era is cap. I only give daps to them. Capital letters, tight knit like winter sweaters. Stay solid through our endeavors. This bond will never sever. Bomb on anybody that tries to get beside me. I stand tall like Kyrie. And I'm priceless, so you can't buy me or try me. And I'm good in your direction. Got this spirit that guide me. So doing good and going up. My only intention. I'm about to do just what I want. Cross that off the mission. I think it through. Get up and do. With perfect position, pointing forward while in the center. My favorite position, uh, get it by any means. My only favorite color is the green. Stay in focus, stay in free. The hustle is in my jeans, but still know how to keep the fit clean. Stay in focus, stay in free. I can see it, it's in my dreams. Baby, I'ma make it for the team. Stay in focus, stay in free. I'm just trying to get that cream cash rules, everything around me. Stay in focus, stay in free. Yeah, yeah, staying stay focused, staying stay free. free. Yeah, that's what y'all better be on, bro. Yeah, you better get right. Staying focused, staying free. Get focused if you want to stay free. Because I'm telling you, man, if you mess up, if you mess around and mess up come Tuesday, and then you continue to mess up and you mess up on next November. Man, ain't gonna be no being focused. Ain't gonna be no being free. You're gonna be trying to figure out how you can keep feeding you and your damn family, bro. What's up, man? Your boy Protocol is checking in. Friday night flights. You know how it go down every Friday night. 
Yeah, we're going to talk about 45, 47. I didn't mean to hit him just now, but we're <laughs> we definitely going to talk about him in a little while, man. Oh, I'm feeling good. I done went and got me some good fish. I done went and got me some good grits because they was passing that out over there on Laythorpe and uh, and uh, uh, Louisville Road. But Keisha Gibson Carter and uh, Alicia Blakely, it was a community give back, man. It was going down. I'm feeling good. I got my little drinky drink. I keep my uh, bottle of rock in the freezer. And I just want to say it's a, a picture circulating with some dude that put some Henny in the freezer and it was frozen. But my liquor ain't never frozen. I've been freezing liquor for a long time. I don't know what he had going on in that bottle, but that was not liquor. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, man, I hope y'all had a good week, man. I hope work was great. I hope you got your bills taken care of because it's the third of the month, which meant that your bills was due two days ago. And um, I hope everything is copacetic. Uh, we are cutting down on the amount of families that we are putting in hotels, even though I know that's not happening because we still got Van Johnson in office. And he's going to keep voting to raise taxes and cause people rents to go up and mortgages to go up. And then he's, you know, the part of them Democrats. They print. You feel me? The money machine go... And unfortunately, that shrinks the value of the dollar. But we're going to talk about all of that and some more. Because, you know, it's that time, man. It's time for a Friday Night Flight. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and prepare for uh, takeoff in this thing. Although the plane is already in the air, as you see. Um, and we're going to get things rolling, man. It's a good night, man. I'm, I'm honestly feeling good. I'm feeling great. I got some of my favorite people coming on here as far as the city is concerned. Um, I got some of my favorite topics to say. Yes, I'm saying favoritist because that's my word. All right. If we can make up genders, I can make up words. I'm just saying. If the equal, equal opportunity, that's what we're doing, right? Equal opportunity. So I'm just going ahead and taking my opportunity as it comes to me. All right, guys. I know how we do. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board Friday Night Flights with services covering everything you knew and might have missed. We are clear for takeoff and expect to be in the air in a moment's time. We ask that you please fasten your seatbelts at this time. Secure all baggage underneath your seat or in overhead compartments. We also ask uh, that you put your seats in your trays in an upright position for takeoff. Please make sure all personal electronic devices, including your laptops and cell phones, people, are fully charged or attached to the charger. Smoking is allowed for the duration of flight, and drinks are highly encouraged. Thank you for choosing Real Nigga Airlines. Let's go ahead and take flight. All right, so I ain't even going to hold it off, man. My dog is in the building, so I'm going to definitely bring him in with all of the funk and everything we talk about, man. The guy that is going to unseat the incumbent in this here District 3 race, my dog, Todd Rose. Todd Rose, what's good, bro? Man, what's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Man, living life and enjoying the ride, bro. That's that's the best yes, I can uh, do. Live life and enjoy the ride, man. I know that's right. How's everything, yo, man? How's this race treating you, brother? Man, listen, man. Just listening to people and hearing their concerns and seeing their disappointment, that's enough of motivation. This is make you want to do the right thing at all times. Mm-hmm. 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 That's it, man. I'm I'm so glad that, you know, you're able to hit the road and to uh talk to the people. Get out there and knock on them doors, man. I've been seeing from a lot of people that uh you, my friend, have been doing some things that has not been done. You've been out here knocking on these doors and hitting the ground and and really talking to people face to face. I'm I'm hearing from people that, you know, dang, Todd did something that I didn't even see the, the lady who's sitting in there do. He's coming around and he's talking to us and I'm seeing him in the neighborhood every day. Like, what's really going on? So right. So, so man, th- th- tell me about that journey, man. Tell me about that and, man, and talk listen, to the people. It, it's- it's a very unique journey because when you are serving, you, your job is to serve the people, mm-hmm. listen to their needs, hear their concerns. And then just the most important thing, the neighborhood, mm-hmm. the communities, the people live in those. So in order for us to help them and to know what's going on, we have to be committed and involved. And so, man, it just wakes me up. And it's a teaching moment because it teaches me what to do 
and what not to do. Mm-hmm. And man, I'm learning a lot along the way. Well, I'm glad that it's been, you know, of the greatest of learning experiences for you, bro. And uh, I know this isn't your first time on the uh, on the election route. Um, you ran for president recently for the school board, right? Yes. Yes, sir. OK, OK, man. How was how was uh, how was that uh, experience and then taking it and adding it into, you know, what you're doing now as far as running for uh, District three for the city? Man, it was a wonderful experience. In that, in the school board race, mm-hmm. I didn't run into like mudslinging. You know, it was clean. And man, I, I supported, I supported both really, mm-hmm. either Roger Moss or Ty Whiteley. You know, I felt like they both had something to bring to the table in one way to another. And I never played the dirty game. Like I always like speed out of the foolishness and just kept positive and stuck to what I know. But uh, this race here, <laughs> major difference, yep. major difference. But one thing about it, two things for sure, I remain positive, focused, and rational. Absolutely. And that's what we need for our city for representation at City Hall. We don't need somebody who, you know, all over the place, man. You need somebody that's focused, mm-hmm. And paying attention, man. Still my dogs in the background. I, I hear him, man. You even your, your dogs know what's up. You know what I'm saying? Your <laughs> dogs know what's up. Your dogs is is letting it be known to a. I call her the bulldog. You feel me? Your, your dogs is letting the bulldogs know what some more dogs in the yard, and we ain't yeah. messing around with the foolishness. You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Listen, I ain't gonna lie. I am uh, I am glad that you are stepping up to fill that void. You know, I, I tell people that, you know, I'm, I'm pushing for you in the third district because Thank you, man. I personally I believe you, that. Absolutely, man. You, you, you're, there's some good people in the race. Um, when I say good people, I mean you and then Clinton Coward. Um, good people in the race. Um, but when it comes down to what the city needs and what I see that the city needs, um, I think that you provide a particular expertise. Like we have a problem with our youth in the city, um, whether it be absent fathers. You know, I'm I'm on the Republican conservative side of the aisle when people want to throw out politics or whatever. And um, one of the the key components of conservatism is you know a strong nuclear family. And, you know, for whatever reasons, that was systematically created. I'm also a conservative Republican that that is a real black that will say, hey, listen, there was a system put in place to uh, destroy the black nuclear family. Um, And it was accepted by all people with money because one thing about it, um, when the black nuclear family is strong, when there's a, a strong male in the house and there is a strong woman that follows the directions of her real strong male in the house, our families were better, right? When the America, when we were going through slavery as a people, which was a system, an economic system that was put in place of, of oppression, um, they did what they had to do to break our family spirit because our families were so strong that not only were we thriving as best we could, doing these uh, very hard times, but we also was organizing rebellions and we were organizing uh, break free moments to where they had to break that family. And then you pushed further to when we were uh, freed, if you would, and we were starting to build and have our own, we were still out doing them with the little that we have. When I say them, is those people who are in power structure, whether it be uh, old white men, uh, women old, uh, married to old white men, uh, blacks, Indians, Asians, whoever that had status. Whenever we started building, it hurt them. It bothered them to where they had to go back and destroy us once again. Right. And then we fast forward to, you know, the great society in the 60s and the 70s and the quote unquote New Deal and how they restructured the country. They broke up the families again. We're going to make it hard for you to live. Women, we're going to offer you welfare and and big daddy government is going to take care of you and your kids. And, you know, we were destroyed again. So, you know, I say all that to say that 
you understand the importance of a strong nuclear family and a strong male role model. You've been coaching, from what I understand, for years, right? Mm -hmm. For quite some years. When you've been dealing with our youth, our young men that needs a, a, a male figure in their life. Um, our, our young women that, that needs a, a, a male figure, some strong figures in their life. Um, you were there. You've been there. Yes. And, uh, man, that's respect. That's that's Thank big you, respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that you, that's something that you bring to the table that our city needs because, yes, sir. you know, our kids are running rampant. <laughs> we know this. Um, and it's, you know, for the simple fact that they bored or um, they feel like they need money or they feel like this is what they know that they're supposed to do and you know, all of this, this real foolishness that, you know, it takes someone like you that's willing to step up and say, nah, this is what it is. And we don't have that representative on the stage right now or on the dais right now, if you would. Um, so being that we don't have that on the dais, somebody who understands that, someone who who can speak when it comes to uh rec centers and when it comes to rec teams and when it comes to the youth, you know, all these properties that the city owns, um, they need somebody who's familiar with these properties. You know what I'm saying? They need somebody who Absolutely. actually know what's going on. So me personally, knowing that we need a wrangle on our youth, um, somebody with a, with a handle on that understanding, and you're the top guy to sit on that dais and have that talked about, as well as all the other great things that you, you know, bring to the table. But I think that, you know, if we had a person in a particular expertise that has a strong focus that is up there and can bring that to the table. We can be stronger as a, as a, a city, the government, the city, of apparatus. you know, everybody in the power range of Megazord wasn't the arm. You know what I'm saying? You had <laughs> one Zord was the foot was the left leg. The other Zord was the right leg. One was the left arm, right arm, torso, head. So, you know, that's, that's how we got to right. look at that. That's how I look at it, man. I'm an eighties baby raised in the nineties. So, you know, everything that I look at kind to kind of a uh, attaches to, you know, any type of cartoon or show that I looked at, you know, growing up when it came to teamwork. So it that's works. right. Power Rangers. <laughs> that right. We are troopers. Yes, sir. Captain Planet. Big bad beetle boards. You feel me? All that day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but that's what that is, man. That's that's what that is. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of of your vision for D three. And uh, speaking of your vision, I know. But to the people that's love that's checking in, shouts out. <coughs> excuse me. Shouts out to Miss Deidre Murray, who is uh checking in. Um, I got to. You know what? I need to put that pop up chat. While I get this pop up chat, man, tell us about your uh your platform and what you see for um the third district, and then offering into the city of Savannah. Well, what I see first and foremost, we are shorthand. Uh, I may talk a little slow because of the feedback, so forgive me for that. It's all right, go ahead. But public safety is the number one responsibility of government. And right now, we are short uh, at least 150 plus officers. So getting our police department fully staffed is very important. So therefore, we can get to community policing because my father, former Lieutenant Tar Rose Copper Claus, he was a community officer. So by me seeing my dad as an example of what community policing looked like, it, it meant a lot and it taught me a lot. You know, I remember like, like parents used to call his phone, people would call his phone and, and he would go and talk to their child. And nine times out of 10, that didn't result in the arrest. You know, he was able to help them calm down and, and, and find another route. Mm -hmm. And so that's important. So definitely, you know, I was blessed enough to be endorsed by the PBA, the Police Belevenant Association of Southern State. So that speaks volumes right there within itself. To give them a better understanding, to give them the support and everything they need to be able to be successful, help our communities and help our people. Absolutely. And when I say our people, I mean all people. Right. Right. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that, man. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people tend to think, you know, and I see it um, with some of my conservative friends to where, you know, we can mention 
black people, even though we're the majority of the city, but, you know, we can say things like, um, we want to help the black community, we want to help black people. And they get upset, you know, when it's like, they feel like, oh, well, why are you just singling out those particular people? Or why are you singling out that group? And how is that going to help? And it's like, well, we want to help all people. Please don't don't ever get it twisted as if we don't want to help all people because, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. You know, that's love to be said. But, you know, black's been dealt a, da- a, a, a dastardly hand in this thing. You know, it's it's starting to hit a lot of white communities now, but, like, we they, they've been up on us for years. For years, they've had a head start and beating up on us to where now, you know, you're starting to feel it. But, yo, like, yours is reversible pretty quickly. We got some things that's been going on to people that has been, you know, you got moms who've been living in hotels for since their kid was in kindergarten and they going to third, fourth grade now, you know, or or, or second grade now because it's it's been hard. It's been hard, whether it's been teaching of finances, um, whether it's, you know, the way that uh, the home game, the financial game has been played on them. Um, you know, it, it's, it's hard, but we do want to take care of all. But just don't get understand we want to help everybody and we're going to help everybody. But when we harp in on little black kids, black parents, whatever the case may be, it's no offense to you. So I'm, I'm glad you said, you know, hey, I want to help everyone because, you know, they'll hear us and they'll see us talk about the black community and they'll see, you know, brothers like me and you with the long dreads and the beers and be like, oh, snap, you know, they ain't going to ain't here for me. No, we're here for you, baby. We we got love for you, baby. We definitely got That's love right. for you. Um, man, look, in my life, I've been blessed by all different kind of people, man. Mm-hmm. All walks of life, man. So I respect it. And then my faith in what I believe in. It teaches to love all, man. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you for that. All right. Yeah, there we go. Yes, sir. I know another thing, too, that's important to me. Gender access. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. so important, man, because, again, if I'm not allowed to put anything on the agenda for my district, for the citizens, then how can I do my job? It's impossible. I mean, we're the only city in a city manager form of government that it takes five votes to get something put on the agenda. That's, that's not good. It's not good at all. Yet they do it. Yet they freaking do it, man. Like I heard him, uh, him being the mayor, the guy who changed up everything. I heard him recently mention that, um, he is going to, if elected again, he is going to change it back to what it was as far as uh, agenda access is concerned. And the question, or my question is, sir, what in the hell made you want to do that in the first place? Like, you wouldn't have to change it back. For, second of all, you can you can truly change it back right here, right now, if you wanted to. Um. But the fact of the matter is you don't want to. You really don't want to. You'd rather keep the people out of the process. You would rather have your majority of folk and y'all get through what y'all want to get through and, and be damned to everybody else. That's that's just my my take on it. Um Oh Lord, what's going on? Okay, I got you. I got you. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, cool. And we back over there. All right, yeah. So, um, you know, you got your majority. You got your people who are going to help you get your agenda through. And you're fine with it. You don't care about it being five because your same five that's going to vote to get it on your agenda is going to be the same five that rubber stamps it on through. And... Everything else is 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 whatever, and I feel like that's a problem. I personally believe that. First of all, I should I should I don't think there should be a minimum number period for all right. the person to want to get something on the agenda. But if right. we just 
have to have a minimum number, if you would, to get things on the agenda, the minimum number should be two. Right. A person whose I district agree. it is and an at-large. A person who district it is and a mayor. A person who district it is and maybe the neighbor of that district, you know? like, And then from there, you go on and you, you, know, you talk to the rest of the people on the board, on the council, and then y'all negotiate and come to a place where you can get uh get get something done. I, that, that's what it should be. Um right. But it's all about personal interest and there's no real discussion, there's no real debate. Um they don't really know, you know, what's going on or how it's going on and and it is what it is. Uh-oh. We have another visitor checking in. It's a young man running for the 5th district. Uh he is in this thing. Uh, we're going to have a good conversation. Uh, let's see. It says he, is he muted? Is, is no, you, I heard him. You heard him? Mm-hmm. Can, oh, you can hear him talk? Yes, sir. Huh. Interesting, because I sure can't hear him talk. Well, let's, uh, let me see. Where's his audio settings at? All right. No. Oh. Oh, man. There's a way to, t- oh, Okay. There's a way to mess with. Okay. What is his? Uh, no, that's his default sound. That's his default sound. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let me, uh, I did that. All right. Oh yeah, y'all. We got a. Uh, we got new thing. New things coming through. New things coming through. Let me see this triple flight scene. Oh man. Yes, sir. Go ahead and get my guy in here, man. He's got to be a part of the party. Y'all just bear with me for a sec while we get these things right. I got to find out why I don't hear Mr. Bryant because there should be no way in the world that I don't hear him and my brother talk to him. Now, that right there, and that is just plain crazy. <laughs> New technology, man. We running. We making things better and better as we move on in life. You know what I'm saying? You got to upgrade. You got to upgrade. If you ain't upgrading in life, you know what I'm saying, then... What is you doing, baby? What is you doing? Ain't lying. <laughs> All right. So we got that there. And uh where is my other one? All right, let's see here. Coming, Mr. Bryant. He is coming, my guy. All right, let's see here. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. There you go. There we go. Oh, and I can hear him now. Oh, like, oh then we got volume A, you see me Yes, sir. I y'all. have so much fun with this stuff, man. Hey, you're supposed to, man. You live in life. And when you live in life, man, you got to have the fun. Or, yeah, you know. Yeah, man, listen. It's just going, it's going, it's going to run you over. It's going to run you over if you don't have the fun. All right, y'all. This right here is the candidate that is vying to unseat the young lady in the fifth district. How long has she been in that, uh, in that seat, Brother Bryant? Woo! As I tell people, well, how long does it take you to get your house to the plumber? Mm. 12 years. Mm. 12 years. I ain't said that you did. Twelve years a slave, boy. That's you know that's my movie right there. <laughs> that's my movie right there. I actually I love that movie. Well, I'm uh, only that way. I'm only gonna pray for it. You know, you and ahead. you know why I love that movie. I love that movie because uh, right. my man he did not start off as a slave. My man was a whole free man in these streets. You understand? My man was playing the violin. A man was making that money. He was he was out here making some folk look real, real I'm shitty. I, I'm going to say it because this is my show. I say what I want. He was out here making folk look real right. shitty. And they did not like that. So they snatched him up and they threw him in slavery. And uh, he bided his time mm. for 12 years. Got up, but he found the right person, and and he was able to get up out there. So, y'all, if you've never seen Twelve Years a Slave, man, I suggest you watch that movie, and it, it will make you think. That was one of those movies where I was like, see, I don't subscribe to 
all black people were slaves. I just, I, I can't subscribe to that because I know that that is not the truth. Were there a lot of us who were enslaved? Yes, absolutely. Um, but it wasn't everyone. You had some noble people out here. Um, and if you really know about the forming of this country, you'll know that an African nation was, a, was the very first nation. Morocco was the first nation to recognize this country as an actual country. Our very first treaty came from a black nation. So if you know about that, if you know about the Moors, the Berbers, and, and really citizenship around the world, um, you, you would know some things. So that's why I play in history. That's why I don't subscribe to no matter what. I will always be a victim because I already know that there is black freaking liberation for us. You know what I'm saying? I know that we, we have been a liberated people before. We can bust moves and, and hold it down for our people in the best way. And that's why we're about to elect some new people up in City Hall. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to liberate the city of Savannah. We're going to liberate these single families. We're going to liberate these black business owners and minority business owners or small business owners, however we want to label them, to make sure that they, too, get a piece of this here that is ours. This is our dirt. This is our dirt. And we ain't finna let these New Yorkers and, and other folk come on up in here and, and just force us up out of it and give us pennies while they make millions and billions of dollars. Ain't gonna happen. If, if, if I can, if y'all ever, y'all remember, y'all know this song, Mary Mary has big shackles off my feet. Y'all know the rest of it. So I can dance. It's gonna take the shackles off Savannah. That's it. We have to. Yeah. But is the people ready to? Are are, are the people? Well, you're going to be ready to. Or in this case, you're going to get pushed out of the way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a part of a change, or do you want to be on the menu as the next lot of the day? Mm -hmm. That's the honest to God truth. It's simple as that. Man, it don't get no simpler, honestly. But is it too simple? Is it too simple for simpletons, right? Is it is it is it still going to be to a point of, hey, that's why I love to get my 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 fish sandwich from man. I got to support the I got to support the fish sandwich and the right. juice. You know what I'm saying? Is it is it going to be, uh, hey man, shoot man, dude graduated from Savannah State, you know, and, and he be at the club with me, and he done, he done been to the funerals. And, and he play he played the he played the keyboard for uh for my church. So you know, I got to support the fact that he played the keyboard for my church. Like, is it too simple for simpletons? Because these same people who are crying about congestion, who are crying about the new arena being put in a black neighborhood and now they can't drive and, and their housing properties are going up um, that are crying about all the apartments that are being built all around them. They're the same ones who are going and voting for particular people, even though they cry, even though they complain, they still vote for these particular people. So what is the message and the conversation with those particular people who are, I don't want to say stuck on stupid, but they kind of stuck on stupid. Um, what's their convo with them? I think it's, it's several things I've noticed. I'm going to hear Todd's feedback on this as well. But what I've noticed in the most recent one, which is disappointing, is this here. I go do these things for my friend who has a mask of a half million dollars, and I get a small amount of money. I get a thousand, I get two thousand. My nonprofit gets money, but your people across the city are hungry. Mm -hmm. So while you're over here getting this little crumb, and developers getting millions out the back of your people, your people still hungry. So that's the first issue. The second issue is, oh, they my friend, and they my homeboy. Uh, they used to help. They come to my child's birthday party. That's malarkey. I love Joe Biden, but that's malarkey. Hmm. Here, 
Wait. Let me just let you know, tell your friend. Hold on, your phone broke up a little bit. You say you love who? One thing I want to say is people I like to surround myself with. Is that folks who are going to pull this side and say you're doing things wrong, or hey, you need to think about this different. Since most of y'all out there are nothing but opportunity, non friends. Let's just be real. Mm-hmm. The third part is you're not engaged enough to know the truth, or you'll give people a pass. So if I'm going, if I'm going to hold this person to a certain standard, then I need to hold a second thing to another. It's just, you know, it's no, it's no, it's no secret that I, I, I have both. I have a Democrat, but Stacy. And Nakima, Nakima do nothing Williams and Keisha Loser Bottoms, they were dead wrong. So you gotta tell people when they're wrong. But you got folks out there either out there for the money, they're not real friends, or they just around here just being oblivious for whatever reason, like they don't see what's going on. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We we gonna talk about that because uh your pop your your people in trouble. And I, I got the question. We, I, I hope I got a little time to kind of dig in depth with that because I need to know because you're you're a very intelligent individual. I I I have witnessed that. I know that. So I got to know, and we'll talk about it. So you can just ponder on this a little while. I'm I'm, I'm gonna give you a second to think about it. Mm-hmm. I needs to know why are you so headstrong on them people? I got to know why them. You see how they move. You see what they yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and, and I can understand again, I tell people, you know, I understand the social policies that, yeah. you know, they say that they, they say that they stand for. I completely understand the social policies, but after so long, it's evident that a lot of it is lip service to be elected, you know, X amount of years, right? 12 20 years in in office um your 20th year being arguably your most uh impactful as far as your pockets is concerned because you done amassed you know almost a million dollars right your nonprofits amass a lot of money but the people the people are still being left in worse positions, right? It's like you use these. We're going to, we're going <laughs> to, my favorite one right now. Vote for me and we're going to, we're going to erase your student debt, right? Um, vote for me and we're going to make sure everybody has free health care. And it's like, you've been telling me this since forever. <laughs> and it still hasn't happened yet. So yeah. when is it where you're like, all right, you know what? I'm not even going to well, do that. I, and I'll start, I'll, I'll start that I'm kind of growing out. For me, it is about more of the values. Um, I am a trade, but I'm, I'm, the older I get, I'm becoming more of a moderate. Now, I am a fiscal conservative, but I am a social liberal. I really am. I believe in the idea of... I, but then again, I'm, I'm a diversity, equity, and inclusion person by trade. So it just, so, you know, I, I, I see good on both sides. What I really am interested in, um, and what I really also look at is the Libertarian and the Green Party. What, what, what Cornell West is doing is really interesting. So Cornell West and the Green Party really are talking more along the lines of what black people need to be doing. But that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Let me take it a step further to the local level. The local level, that honestly, parties don't work on a local level. They just don't work well because at the, at the end of the day, the local levels where most things are done. So you really find the local levels is just as well. Um, which is why I loved your comment, Carita, that you said, how are you going to bring somebody in a non partisan race to campaign for you? And then, and then they break the law doing that. So mm-hmm. that's, they break the broke their own Democratic National Committee laws, which was crazy and then all of them lose so and the only reason and i want to say this out loud the only reason the Kima is even in that seat was even the chair of the party because she wanted to be on don lewis hill that's the only reason and she has done nothing for dpg at all and how do i know that i spoke to you mm. so that's that so then you go to a state level um and we don't perform well and we don't perform well we have people like this in the Kima who are all also about the money, which is so highly disappointing to me. You have folks out here, like you said, we say we're going to do these things. We're going to take care of the least enough out. 
We're going to feed the homeless. We're going to make sure you have all the money in the world, and we go back to do the same things that you're going to do on a local level. So tell me why Fair Fight now is sitting on $4 million. But we have people across the state of Georgia hungry. Listen, I can tell you how, right? Okay, that, yeah. I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so now, I think there's a problem. problem is you're making promises that you can't keep, which is why, you know, one of the things, and I'm going to go fifth district, one of the reasons why I have written the things I've written and have the platform I have is because we don't have promises, we have measurable outcomes. But, you know, that's just a different way. So to me, I'm more of a moderate because I, I'm, I believe in fiscal conservatism. I just, I think my, my, my issue with um, the red side is, is more of the lack of, what I see is a lack of our diversity policy, which may not, may, I may not look at but that both both sides have their, their real serious issues. Um, but I I see a point with some of the Dems are like, y'all just giving lip service. Right. You you're giving a lot of lip service. You're just saying things and I don't believe you're saying things to get elected. How can you how are you gonna make an impact? The impact is not around work rhetoric. Well, um, so I, I thank you for that honesty. Um, you opened up a little bit. Um, we still going, we, we going to talk about, you said some things about, um, election, uh, tampering and fraud in the past that I want to talk to you about, especially in some recent, uh, some recent developments, as well as now that you're in a race, um, I've shared it before. And, um, after, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about tonight, I hope that you pay attention because they will use the, they've been cheating in elections since, you know, they've been cheating in elections. That's just what it is. And they, they want and need their desired outcome. Um, so as you're in the race, I just want you to pay attention as well, because this shit can get really funky, um, really funky, really fast. Um, Speaking of the red side, why is the NRA calling me at dang near nine o'clock at night trying to beg me some money? I ain't giving y'all no money because y'all got rid of my dog Coleon Nor. So I'm just saying that now. NRA. Yeah, Todd Rosie to call you. Todd, get, get on the phone. Call. <laughs> you need a, you need a donation. <laughs> they won't. They want me to pay. They ain't trying to pay nobody. I should have answered the phone and told them they got they gonna cut the check for my dog Todd and 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 uh. Robert, Robert, are you two way? They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't. Are, are you two way? Hmm? Are you two way? What is that? The Second Amendment. Are you? Are you? Are you what about Second Amendment? Yes, to a certain. Yes, yes. Okay. I never heard that. I've never heard it called that before. Okay. Yes, and and I have an answer to that. I also, and this coming from a family where I have family that have a talk name. I have my own weapon. I don't have no time, but I, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a conversation that needs to be had. But I am, and then caveats, because I don't, I don't see why we need assault rifles in our homes. I just don't. Well, that's, that's hard for me well, to, I thought, what's your thoughts on that? I, I want to hear his thoughts. I, I just want to say we need those because, listen, it's, you want to be able to even out any fight at any time, whether it's, the 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 lower level people who have those weapons or the tyrannical government because we forget we forget the problem is we forget that tyrannical governments do arise okay and the whole reason for it was for the people to protect themselves and staying free when it came to a tyrannical government so you know we just got to do better education, but yes, Todd. And I just had to say that because, you know, you know, the, 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 I hate the word assault rifle or assault weapon because any weapon, anything that is used to strike a person or to I cause harm to a person <laughs> is assault. Okay. That is assault causing harm to a person, striking a person is assault What well, this. I can turn this cup into an assault cup. You understand? I can turn my cell phone into an assault <laughs> phone, okay? And Naomi Campbell was good with doing that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but Todd, jump in this man. Two way, what's up? Man, listen. <laughs> to each his own. But listen, I will protect my family against any form yeah. or domestic. That's it. There you have it. That's it. 
That's it. You know, you, you know, better own, read your, your literature. You know, <laughs> own, owning guns was a, a was a major tenant in in um the whole um black nationalist um black liberation movement because that's the only way you got to be able to protect yourself. You understand? When you have assets, yeah. when you have lands, when you have an economy, you have to be able to protect yourself because yeah. someone with a big stick will come and will take from you. They will right. do that. So being that, but that you know is, what's important? What's up? And I'm glad we brought this up. That's why it's so important to teach our youth absolutely how to do things the right way. Absolutely. When it comes to firearm safety. Yeah, absolutely. And a firearm. Yes. Because yeah. when we don't, we already know that they make bad choices and, con and have to suffer heavy consequences. Mm -hmm. So to teach them about firearm safety, and then not only that, to make sure you legit. Yes. You can't be a convicted felon carrying a firearm. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Don't commit felonies and have your right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, it's not it's not That's all a bad point. thing, That's man. The gun, the, the weapon can't do anything. Yeah. It's the person right. who has the weapon that can do something. That's it. We got people who find all kinds of ways to if cause I'm, harm. I may, bro, I may. Let me show you. Let Bro, let me do this real quick. Let me show you something that just happened that people don't realize that we're going to do in council. You saw my perspective, mm -hmm. but when Todd gave his, it made me think different. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. I want people to see that because we have now is going to take all. We need to be able to sit back and listen to Um, And I put what he said, it literally shifted what I thought. I was like, you know what? That makes sense. We need to teach children how to do what they need to be doing, which mm -hmm. is going to school. So you ain't got to have no felonies. So you can't. I never thought about it that way. But that's what you want on this council. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, we were talking earlier prior to you coming in, right? We need this type of conversation. This, you know, I think they said they've only had, they haven't even out of, they haven't had three executive sessions, I think. What, what's the number of executive sessions they've had since they've been on council? Very minuscule, right? I don't know the total number. All I know is that they're avoiding them. They are avoiding them. And that's where a lot of conversation is had. And then they don't want to get on the dais and they don't want to have long meetings. Listen, I understand that having long, drawn-out meetings can be a lot. But when you meet, what, every other week, every two weeks, um, that's an issue. Oh, we lost my boy. Let's see. No, he sure. probably come back. I'm still, um, I'm still here. It is. Oh, okay, it, okay, it, it right, cool. Problem. Uh, it's a problem that that I'm very disappointed in. I think honestly, when we participate in what we see now, it, it's it's less about voter suppression. What happens is you have restricted conversation and restricted access. You now have restricted the will of the residents, the voters, and. Now, what's happening is you see a low, low, voter turnout, low, low voter turnout. But what I hear, you know, in, in the field when I'm out and about talking to people is, why well, I'm a vote is going to be the same thing. No, it won't be the same thing. People have lost hope. People have lost hope. And I want to, I want to draw this comparison here because it's really interesting that you go from a man, uh, Don Lewis, who had his skull broken so that you would have a voice, to now when we have black folk take some money, that man would turn over in his grave and, and disenfranchising black people who, who he got his, almost got killed for. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? What are we doing? Enriching ourselves. That's what we're doing. We're, we, we're not caring about the people that we're supposedly here to serve. Yeah. We are here to enrich ourselves. Um, and and we have to we have to change that. We have to um, address these people head on, you know, something that I, I've been doing. I love doing it. I catch flack for doing it. I don't really care um, that people want to give me flack because the truth has to be said. Um, they can't, when they get comfortable, they do certain things. When they know that you're not paying attention, they do certain things. And we cannot allow these people to continuously get away with this foolishness. Um, Let me bring this in real quick. It, it's related, but it's not. Talking about distraction. This whole Israel-Palestinian Palestine thing, that's a distraction for something. I don't know what it's for. But I want to remind people of this. 
Um, I, I have traveled to Europe and I've been in Sarajevo. I'm very, I'm very keen on how the Sarajevo, um, uh, how that wall is, you know, and the date, the, the date and all that. And how we try to get involved with stuff inside with all the schools for all the schools, right? And then, but how is that becoming a distraction? And how is the genocide of Palestinians becoming right? But what what's going on? It's going on how we in America will line up to the mainstream media. Mainstream media is helping us down. Yo. Your internet finally said. I ain't rocking with you no more. <laughs> I don't know if you got the Wi-Fi on or you got uh uh-huh. uh uh something, but I got as I look at your bars, I got I got red bars. It's ugh. That's that that's the iPhone. Yeah, it is. It's that iPhone life. <laughs> no, I can't afford that. You can't afford the iPhone? <laughs> I understand it, it. It be that way. Sometimes. I get this Android this button. I've been having this phone for three years. Oh man, well, it's funny that I can still hear you, but I can't even see you over here in my in my control room. What you got going? On? I, I can't hear. I can't hear him at all. That's okay. You can't hear him at all. I don't know. I mean, even even when he's talking, it's just like his the feedback. Yeah, yeah, he got he got a real real bad connection. I don't know what's going on, but we going we going to keep rocking. I still see him on the show. Well, he was in the show. Now he's gone now. Um, we going to bring him back, man. That's Robert Bryant, man. That's my that's he's he's definitely uh he's definitely vying for the support of the fifth. And I respect it because again, that's what we need, man. We need regular down to earth people who are willing to talk, have conversations and be moved you know what i'm saying like and be right. moved to where you know i never looked at it that way um now that we're you know we're, we're talking about it let's um uh, let's handle this accordingly um and let's make some things happen so i appreciate that all right let me see let's go ahead let's go ahead and do this all right so while i wait for him to come back uh come back in this thing we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump in a, a few uh conversations that i definitely wanted to uh to have today um let's see here all right i'm gonna start with uh this right here um you know he brought in uh the conversation of uh palestine so uh hey if y'all ain't follow me on facebook you know what i'm saying hit your boy on facebook a lot of the show a lot of the things that i talk about will come off of my facebook page and also my twitter page and then also out of my news feed um that i have saved particularly for the show um we are going to find where is it i need my video there we go oh no let's not go here i know where to go we're gonna go here y'all we're going to go to my twitter page or x.com but whatever they want to call it the uh oh is it down oh snap is twitter down Looks like Twitter is down. Oh, no, it's back. All right, here we go. Oh, yep, straight to the media. That's what I want to see. All right, y'all. I don't know if y'all saw this video. This shit is hilarious. <laughs> it's helping so many people. So you telling right, me y'all can afford it? We just sent $100 billion of your tax money to Israel. And y'all ain't seeing it. Hold on, let me put this on the screen. I got to put this yep. on the screen for y'all. Your tax money is helping so many people. So you telling me y'all can afford to send $100 billion of them bitches somewhere else? And I can't even afford to fucking live. But your tax money is hard at work for the people. Oh, my fucking God. Where are my manners, Mr. President? I've been working 60 hours a week every week for my whole fucking life just to blow up a hospital. Good investment. Thank you so much, bitch. I can't even afford to eat a goddamn fucking meal. And you talking to me about this super shit. Why is this fucking country so selfish? Bitch, let me tell you something. It costs $3,000 to rent a fucking dugout in this bitch. The price of food going up and wages ain't doing shit. But because shit keep going up, not only is the wage is not going up, the shit we can buy with the motherfuckers, the amount of things is going to fuck down. Motherfuckers ain't got health care. If I get hurt, I die. Because I can't even afford to die. And you Take got back to the top. Can you hear now? We just sent a hundred billion dollars of your tax money to Israel. Nah, uh, when you played the uh, we, we, we just sent a hundred the million. music video before the show. 
Couldn't even hear that as well. You couldn't hear the video either. Mm -mm. Yo, way. All right, hold on. Let me let me get your let me get your audio right. I'm glad you said that. That's cool. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Uh oh. Where we at? We over here. All right. Let's see here. Well, well, that's that. Um. I wonder, can the show hear it? Guys, in the comments, man, chime in. Can you hear the audio? Could you hear the video just now? Because they said we had that issue last week. And I'm pretty sure that I had addressed it, and I heard it coming through on Facebook, on my phone. But again, I heard it on my phone last week, and um, it was acting stupid. So, you know, shit happens, man. That'd be technology. You can't live with it, can't live without it. Sick bastards. What we gonna do, y'all? What we gonna do with all this technology? All this stuff they hitting us with? We gonna barbecue or mildew? I'm gonna try and barbecue. I ain't even gonna flex to you. I'm gonna try and barbecue. Um, Where is... Where is... Now that's crazy. That's crazy as hell. It's all to it. It's all to the G. Robert, where you at? You coming back in this thing? Where my girl Rashida at, man? I know she had a uh she had a heck of a night tonight. Y'all um y'all had to go. Did y'all did you shoot over across town tonight too? No, nah, man, I didn't have an opportunity to. My son had surgery today, my baby boy. That's so right, that's right. I was in the hospital all day today. Okay. How's he doing? Is everything all right with him? Yeah, everything is well, man. Um it's his fifth surgery. Mm. Um, so oh, we're so praying, praying it won't be another, be another, 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 another but, uh, but uh, uh, he's doing well. He got injured in football a year ago. So just trying to deal with that, man. Get him back on the field. I understand, man. I understand. So I, I wish the, the, the speediest of recoveries to the young man. Um, Thank you, bro. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I know how, uh, how that can be, you know. As far as being a parent and your child is down and, and you know, it's really, you know, outside of making sure that they take their meds and they're comfortable and get them to the doctor. As a parent, there's really right. nothing that you can do outside of, you know, just. I know, man, that's the killer part because I was like, man, give me his pain and put it on me and let him be straight. Right, right. <laughs> um, he, he, he's, a, he's a winner, though, you know what I'm saying? He's a winner. He got a father like you. Um, so, um, yeah, man, it's going to be awesome. We're going to come out of this thing on point. Um, yes, sir. So, yeah, man, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's definitely been a lot going on around this thing. Um, as far as the city is concerned, as far as just race is concerned, like you said, you got people out here slinging mud and throwing mud like no other. And, right. It's ridiculous. Like, how can you see God, let God be God. Or how can you speak God, but you totally negative? Right. Like bitter water and sweet water can't come out the same fountain. Mm -mm. It's either one or the other. And so I don't even focus on that, man. You know, despite of when elected and four years from now, somebody decided to run against me, mm -hmm. I don't have no more to slam. Right. So, because my work should speak for me. Absolutely. And if I've been doing right by the people, no matter what you say to the people, they're going to know truly that Todd is a man of his word. He's been consistent. He's been committed. And so that speaks by itself. You know, so when people don't do what they're supposed to do, then you have all the foolishness behind it. Mm -hmm. That's why I say the truth is set you free. And it will. And as long as we move in truth, we're going to get set free. Yes, sir. We're going to get set free. Um, speaking of moving in truth and being set free, I got I got to pull this up, right? Um, so this happened. Um, actually, let me go over here on my Twitter. Um Let's see. Oh my 
I think I yeah, I did. I put it on my page and then we're gonna go to this new article. Um So this is yeah, we're gonna go with be easy. Yeah, go ahead, be easy. All right. Come on over here. So, um in Connecticut, some things happened, and this is one of the things that I really wanted to share with Rob. Um, let's get this double flight with screen. We had some things happen over in Bridgeport, Connecticut, all right? Um, the breaking news, this uh, this came out two days ago on the 1st. A Democrat judge in Connecticut has overturned the results of the mayoral primary election in Bridgeport and ordered a new election be held after bombshell video evidence of election fraud was found, all right? These people were stuffing the ballot box with ballots. I'm talking about handfuls of ballots in the boxes. Let's go ahead and, and make this full screen, and uh, let's check this out. There we go. Can you see that video, Brody? Here we go. Ain't gonna be no sound. It's just a video of her doing the dastardly deed. This was at 5.42 a.m. Multiple legal absentee ballots being deposited in the ballot box. Wow. All right. She leaves. Or does she leave? Uh, I got to come back. I got some more. <laughs> more in the box. 543, a minute later. And she walks off. But wait. That's horrible. She, she comes back for more. Roughly an hour later. Another handful of ballots. Drop one. Anybody looking? Drop two. Hold up. Get this in here. Uh, all right. Wipe my hands off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> la la la. Gone. Now that's the ballot box. Now she works. She's at the workstation now. She's working. She's a clerk. She didn't got Bally the buddy to pull out a ballot. Or is that more ballots? You got a handful of ballots? Yep. Hey, baby, I need you to go and take that over there. Drop them in that box for me. Drop them in the box for me, okay? It's all right. Ain't nobody going to get you, baby. Just drop them in the box for me. And that's crazy, man. Now, what, what now... You know, we talked about this in 2020, and people called us crazy conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. The election was won. <laughs> the election was won, y'all. Shut up. We don't want you to talk about this, okay? We don't want you to talk about this. <laughs> but unfortunately... Cut your ass. <laughs> Shouts out to fail checking in the building, man. <laughs> caught you. Caught you red-handed. So, because they caught them on video, the judge overturned the election. Democrat judge now overturned the election. So, you know, when it comes to y'all and y'all elections, I want y'all to be vigilant. Because... This is the tricks that they playing and understand that um, they will play these games because they've already done it before. They got away with it. See, they hid behind just like they did with this young lady. When it came to Trump, they hid behind black people. And then as soon as they got addressed for for doing this, oh, those those Republicans are being racist. They're being racist. They're, they're trying to suppress the black vote. No, bitch, you cheated, and we watched you cheat. I don't want to hear that race card thing because you cheated. 
so I I'm mm, uh where was that in Connecticut? Yeah, bros, that was in Connecticut. That was in Connecticut. Uh just this recent election. Let me go. We're gonna go and uh pull up the uh pull up the news article because uh that's that's <laughs> that's an important situation right there. All right, y'all, ballot stuffing concerns. Forced Connecticut judge to overturn Democratic mayoral election results in Bridgeport, Connecticut. A uh, Connecticut judge on Wednesday overturned the results of a local election after concerns rose over a possible ballot stuffing. Bridgeport's 2023 Democratic mayoral primary election would saw incumbent mayor Joe Gannum defeat his challenger, John Gomes, will now be redone in the wake of security footage allegedly uh, showing people stuffing ballot boxes with numerous absentee forms. The ruling by the Superior Court George William Clark comes just six days before the city's general election. I quote um, from the ruling, the volume of ballots so mishandled is such that it calls the result of the primary election into serious doubt and leaves the court unable to determine the legitimate results of the primary. The videos are shocking to the court and should be shocking to all the parties. Bro, say turn up my volume a little bit. Is that good now? Am I am I in now? What's up? All right, cool. Um, so uh, through his ruling, uh, though his ruling could be appealed, it is unclear if city officials will do so in the meantime. The city's election will continue as scheduled with Ganem as the Democratic nominee and Gomes as the independent. See, when we said the same thing happened, let me, let me let me get a little bit more on me. When we said the same thing happened in 2020, they call us crazy. We knew what we was talking about. We were sorry, sore losers. And now here we are. Same shit happened again. And now we can overturn it. Now we can go back and, and uh, say that something happened. And it's a problem. But it's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to play out fair, right? That what we said in 2020 was what it was in 2020. And there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be hurt. There's going to be a lot of people going to be hurt. And my whole thing was, I don't care if if Biden really won, if he really won. But show me that he really won. And people can't show me that. You're not going to tell me that Biden got more votes than Barack Hussein Obama. Everybody voted for Obama. Every black person I know went and voted for him so we could have a black president. Everybody, everybody, grandma, everybody, granddaddy, all the churn, everybody voted for Obama. Plus, all the white folk voted for Obama. So, nah, man, they can take that and can can that when it come to Biden, bro. I believe they stuffed the ballot box just like they did just in this, you know, recent ruling up out of Connecticut. So we're going to have some things happen to the point to where we're even going to have some things happen here in Georgia, because I just seen that um, my dude, Harrison Floyd, shouts out to Harrison Floyd. If you don't know who Harrison Floyd was or is, Harrison Floyd was the only black person caught up in the election situation with um, with uh, Fanny, the biggest Fanny of them all up there in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, where he at? Oh, here we go. That boy. Good right here. That boy real good. <laughs> oh man! All right, so um, Harrison went to Atlanta today, and uh, his people uh, his people went to court for him today. Hold on, let me let me uh, that's not everything I wanted. Oh, somebody else had commented. All right, where we at? Harrison Floyd, one of 18 people indicted with Trump in Georgia election fraud, the only black man, by the way, insists that the 2020 race was stolen from the former president. And he is going to come with all of the facts, you guys. Today is November 3rd, 2023. It's officially three years after the stolen election. I'm just keeping it real. Three years after the stolen election. And um, you're going to find out the truth. They're really scared 
of um oh I got we got to talk about this too cuz I'm I'm going to talk about that. We may talk about it Todd. I may talk about it after you leave cuz it's going to be a scathing situation. I don't know. I don't know. If you want to get in with the get down, you can get down with it. <laughs> but um my man's literally huh? Oh, he say he with it. I bet. Um my man's got all the facts. He know that they cheated. They know up in Atlanta that they cheated, and they're really scared. They keep calling this a Rico. This is not a Rico. They're only saying this to, to really bamboozle the people. This is not a Rico, folk, and not a stretch of the imagination is this a Rico charge. These people did everything that they were supposed to do, and um, they stuck with it. Um, they, they stuck what they were supposed to do. You're not When you're in a highly contested race, you don't – bow down you don't back down you push it all the way to the end um these people say oh well trump took them to court they never really listened to it in court because you had a bunch of people who just they were just told to hate trump and they was not trying to give him a fair shake no matter what i wasn't even given a fair shake just because i like trump and i'd be out here doing shit for the streets and nigga still was out here man that nigga like trump man fuck that nigga and now <laughs> now hey man Man, I'm sorry, man. Man, bro, man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You were right, man. You you was on it. Is my dog back in here? Let me see. Is that you, Robert? Robert. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I got to find I'm you know what? I am going to uh I am going to find that video and I am going to clip that just for when I do have Robert on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts out to the Bulldogs, man. No, yeah, man. Like, I'm about to say that too. We back to beach of that one, <laughs> yeah, man. That was it. Okay, so um, let's see here. Oh, so we got the we got that lady up there in, in Connecticut, right? But that ain't the only crazy thing that's going on, and it it hurts that the Democrat Party really uses black folk to do a lot of their underhanded dirty stuff and we just fall along right in line with it um a young lady by the name of brianna suggs had her door kicked in up in new york today or yesterday um brianna suggs is the chief fundraiser for mayor eric adams which is the black guy that took bill de blasio's place up there in new york um Let's see, the uh, FBI took iPhones, laptops, binders, and folders from New York City Mayor Eric Adams' chief fundraiser's home during a raid on Thursday. FBI agents reportedly took three iPhones from Brianna Suggs' home, uh, along with two laptops, several papers, a manila folder labeled Eric Adams, and a number of contribution card binders. It was reported on Thursday that Adams had abruptly canceled several items on his schedule, including a meeting with senior White House officials. Now, now they're saying senior White House officials. But when the news came out yesterday, allegedly he was going to go meet Biden and had to turn around. Because the FBI had to kicked in his dough. It was a meeting at the White House with Biden and them and they kicked him in his dough. So he had to turn around and go back. They always use us to do this crazy stuff and we just fall hook line and sinker and i just don't understand it man i i don't understand why people are willing to to really just throw away their lives i mean they got uh charges like uh federal funds theft conspiracy to steal federal funds wire fraud wire fraud conspiracy foreign national campaign donations and a conspiracy for those contributions I think the country in, in question is Turkey, where this money came in from. Y'all not Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, all right? Y'all not going to get away with this shit, black folk. Y'all better stop being pawns to these idiots and do your own thing. And and You know what, Ben? What's up? I think we need to find a better system, man. Because if it's happening like that, come on, man. We, we, we got to find a different way so it could be fair all the way across the board, man. No matter what your affiliation is, 
You know what I'm saying? Because if it's that easy, what if the camera wasn't there? Then what? It's in a person. It don't matter what system we have. If a person going to get over, they going to find a way to get over. We got to have oh. honorable people. Right. Right. In these positions. And then we got True. to have honorable people putting their foot on the necks of these honorable people who we put there. Because at the That's end true. of the day, m- money going to corrupt. Power is going to corrupt. I, I did, but you took the words out of my mouth. That's why I'm about to say power, boy. So power. when you got people who are motivated by power, motivated mm-hmm. by money, these types of things are going to happen. We have right. to be a community. We have to get back to getting rid of these people going in these offices and having mm-hmm. millions of dollars. What is this, the population of the city of Savannah? 250, 240, 230, somewhere around there? Yeah, but it, it, it'll be more if you're a clown. Scared and homeless and... This, you might well count the, the visitors, the tourists that come here for right. at least about 30000 a day. So let's just say we got 500,000 people in the city at any given time. Right? And as that's being very modest with the numbers. <laughs> 500,000 people in the city at any given time. The mayor just got, for his election campaign, damn near a million dollars. That's what, $2 a head? $2 a head. Mm-hmm. If you, and, and how much does he get paid? How much does a council, city council member get paid? Uh, 50 for mayor, I believe. And I know for uh, Alderman, it's 25. So $50,000 a year. Yes, sir. That's two hundred grand for one term, and you just raised a million dollars for a fifty a year job. There's something else at play there. We as a people should be looking and saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. How the hell you raised? Why is he getting a million dollars? Who is you is giving you? Who the hell got a million dollars to give a nigga right now? <laughs> who got a million dollars to get? Listen, whoever got a million. Listen, I, just, I don't even need the whole million. I, you know what I would be happy with? I would be happy with my 830000 plus dollars that I was supposed to get for doing that project on Broughton Street that was rudely interrupted by the mayor and his cronies because I gave his ass hell. That ain't how it's supposed to work. If I was awarded a contract, I should have been allowed to handle my business and make my money. That, that would have been fine. But because I'm pro Eddie, because I'm pro Trump, I got my contract snatched. We're going to talk about it. Mr. Johnson. Oh, Mr. Johnson. You some of a bitch, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Man. It's all right, though. These are my words. These ain't Todd words. Y'all can't hold Todd accountable for me. Don't ask him. Don't say that. How you let him talk like that? He ain't let me talk. I I let myself talk. Hey, it's his show. He a grown man, and I'm on his show. But you know, they'll still find a way to twist stuff yeah, up. Yeah, they'll find a way to twist Whatever. stuff up. But that's why, because the whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing is on the internet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is on the internet. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's wrong, you know, when we're talking about building economies, we're talking about building people up, you know, you shouldn't be doing what you can to destroy one segment and build up another. That ain't right. But they're useful idiots, man. They're useful idiots, and they don't care, and they want to tear down in order to build themselves up. And I'm in demolition, so I understand about tearing down to build things up, but you don't do it to people. No, you don't do it to people, man. You don't. You don't do that to whole communities. So, yeah. Now, in all that being said, um, I have a friend who said some things on Twitter 
on the first, and it made a lot of people upset. Uh, can you see the tweet? Can you can you see that, bros? I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of like that, but yeah, I see what you got. Oh, I just can't see the words. Okay, let me see. Explain it to me, brother. I'm about, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read it, but I just I'm about to try and also zoom in for people too, so they can see. Here we go. I can see a little better. See a little better now. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, Kathy Barnett ran for office in um. Oh man, I think Pennsylvania. She went. She ran against Doctor Oz, and then Doctor Oz ended up going against uh Fetterman. So, uh, Kathy Barnett, Kathy for truth. She says black people are either pretty dumb. Or, well, pretty dumb. It's like that time when black people sold other black people to slavers for broken pieces of glass or other trinkets. The white liberal got black people to loot and burn their own communities, support aborting black children, vote against school choice, and support the most racist president in history. Reduce police in their own in their communities only, and welcome illegal aliens to their communities only. I'm guessing Turtle Sleepy Doo said that because she has him uh, next to the thing. Um, that it was a quote from them. And then she says, I'm about sick of us myself. Well, black Twitter and really, really Twitter in general gave Auntie Kathy the business. Um to the point where she has listen black people i said what i said and i ain't taking it back get over your butt hurt and let's talk about those facts um contrary to what you've been taught words are not violence violence is violence look at how we're living it's crazy so yes get mad uh get big mad but learn to get mad at the right people i.e those who got you out here aborting your own children those who got you voting against school choice so your children are stuck in failing schools and on and on. Take your petty smoke and direct it towards those bringing actual violence to the community, to the black community. Peace. Now, as I said, Auntie caught some mean slack for this one, player. Would you say it was rightfully deserved the slack that she was getting from people? Or could you see some of what she was saying? Still they taught? I can see him. Don't. I see here, bros. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Just doing something real quick. Um, so yeah, like I, I personally, I think it was, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was harsh. It was harsh, but sometimes the harsh truth has to be said. Um, she could be in a position where she knows she's fed up and she just spoke the truth for what she felt the truth was, but I don't necessarily think that, you know, she's wrong, especially in the, the turn of, you know, um, the young lady who was caught stuffing the ballots just not too long ago and the one who was running the fundraiser situation for Eric Adams and was had the money going all kind of sideways. Um, I don't personally think that she was wrong in what she said. Oh, let's see. Hey, talking about the whole situation that was so, yeah, man, um, you know, your situation, your feeling. You think that she was nasty for what she said or bros feel like me? Kathy hit the nail on the head. I, I don't see how and why. <sighs> for some strange reason, when you are attached a line a part of the Republican Party conservative values anything of that nature and you say words like this you get 
some of the most trash uh takes from people. Oh, you can't say that as a black person. Um you just saying that to make uh conservatives happy. You just saying that for uh the white people to pat you on the head and all this other stuff. It's like, no. I'm addressing the truth. Like I and I and I made a statement that black folk vote Democrat. Out of the black people that vote, 90% vote straight blue. Straight blue. So if 90% out of 100% of black voters are voting straight blue, then it is safe to generalize majority damn near all because 90 is damn near all of the people as being Democrat voters because 90% is Democrat voters, which means damn near all is Democrat voters. I mean, it's just pure math, that math mass. So if I say that, hey, they're pretty dumb for voting blue because these are the policies that are hurting their community. These are the people who are sending illegal immigrants to their communities these are the people who are telling you it's okay to burn, loot, and raid your neighborhood. Why is it an issue when I address it as such? Why do I have to be a black hater when I am addressing, hey, what you're doing is fucking us up. It's, it's causing an issue. That You know that, that, that store that you burnt down? Yeah, they just collected the insurance check, and now they're not going to rebuild the store. You lose because now you have to travel across town to get your groceries. Now you got to travel across town to get your gas. You're voting for these people with uh, failed education policies all because of whatever. They're black, they're blue, whatever the case may be. I don't know. Um, we talked, we kind of hit on this earlier, but I need to know, even though this is a nonpartisan race, as you've been door knocking, have you gotten the question of, are you a Republican or a Democrat? Man, to be honest with you, man, I got it. That question asked me about three people. Now, one thing about me, I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be honest. And when they asked me that, believe it or not, I already knew where the party they was affiliated with. You know, I knew that. Mm -hmm. But I, I've been honest with them. And I say, look, this is a nonpartisan race. But however, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I'm a Democrat. And the people that asked me that, matter of fact, it was one Democrat and two Republicans that asked me that question. So to the two Republicans that asked me the question, one was like, okay. And then the other one was like, when I mentioned it, it was like, have a good day. But, you know, that's, I, I wasn't mad because, you know, that's people freedom. They can choose what they want. I just felt like I had needed to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't regret being honest despite of how the way they react. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, and I appreciate you for being honest with them. Um, but that's a major thing. People want to know, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? And depending on what you say, they're going to turn their back on you, just as you experience, right? Um, right. Because that's just where we've been pushed to. The, the diametrics has been pushed apart crazy. So, you know, right. I can appreciate when a person says, you know, hey, I'm this, but... I also see this right here, and I'm, I'm this, so I can see right there. See, I understand. Listen, I tell them I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sip my drink as I say this because I'm going to need to. <laughs> as a black man, I know how hard it is when you're dealing with politics to be anything other but a Democrat. 
Now you may get a little if you say you independent, they'll look at you like, oh, okay. But how do you mainly vote? Did you vote for Trump or did you vote for Biden? You know what I'm saying? Like, but they'll give you some grace. If you say you're Republican, they're gonna take your head off. Right? If you say you Democrat. You get to go to all the barbecues and all the social functions and you got a happy, happy wife at home, happy marriage, happy girlfriend, all that good stuff. You know, because I, I listen, I know I, I was had a girl and I, found, I was building a family during the 2020 elections and shit went sideways. And then I had a young lady who I was talking to recently. And. Um, people. Boy, people. When you say or you push, yeah, I'm anti-democrat because first of all, these people can't handle money. They just want to just they just want to make it rain like it's a strip club. And I don't even go to the strip club personally to make it rain my damn self. So why do I want you to make it rain with my money on something else? It's not going to make sense. Um, School choice. Kathy Barnett mentioned school choice. I think that school choice is something major as a people that we need to take advantage of. We be screaming forever. We be screaming forever. Oh, these schools are failing. We need to teach our own kids. It'd be nice to teach our own kids. And then you have school choice. That's like, hey, listen, check this out. You know that tax money that you invested for your kids that they can go to public schools? All that money that they would use in public school, you can take and you can use and you can send them to private school. You can put them in home school. If you want to get together with some people and create a neighborhood school, y'all can do that. And every year, this check right here comes for you as a parent, for you and your child and your schooling. Why wouldn't we want that? We got all these people out here crying. Oh, my God. Governor of DeSantis and all the Republicans, they're trying to take these books out of school. They don't want to teach our kids their black history. But these are the same people who are telling you to take the check and teach your own kids. So if you if the if the people that you telling me don't want your kids to know their history, it's also the people who telling you to, hey, take this check and teach your own kid, and that way you can know they getting exactly as a parent what your kid should be getting. How how does that make sense? No one can make it make sense to how they really want to attack us, but they're telling us to teach our own kids. They don't want us to know our history, but they're telling us to teach our kids our history, and here's the money to do it. No, that money helps the teachers' unions. And the teachers' unions don't care about the teachers, and they don't care about the students. They care about the money that is rolling in through them. They care about them dues and those monopolies that they have on those schools and on those education systems. That's just what that is. So I can't get with, you know what I'm saying, the bashing. You know, uh, Robert mentioned earlier that, there's some policies. They don't really have much uh, diversity policies or diverse policies um, or, or, or policies for diversity within the Republican Party. Well, if you make policy that's flat out across the board for everybody to use, what's, what's the use of having a diversity policy? If the policy is written for access for everyone, what is the use of diversity policy? It's already diverse. It's open for you to use it. Um, I think it's just that, you know, we need to have a, a better a better conversation of the policies, a better look at the policies and, and, and handle business and stop being so polarizing when it comes to Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green Party, whatever the case may be. I'm ready to start my own party. I'm tired of these these legacy establishment parties. Yes, I am an active Republican. I am a active member of my county's um Republican Party. I sit on the executive board. I I do. But this is a learning experience and we're actually making things happen. And I do know that we're getting pushed back from the establishment. We're getting pushed back from the establishment of Georgia. We're getting pushed back from the RNC because we're getting in there. We're doing different things. Me, 
my black behind with the don't blame me, I voted for Trump and the African liberation, the black liberation flag right next to each other is on the executive board for the Republican Party of Chatham County. Allegedly, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, I, I, I should have a clean cut and I should talk like Carlton Banks in order for me to be up on that executive board because it's such a prestigious position. And yet here I am, a real one on this board because it can happen obviously they have to be a diverse group of people if they voted for me to go on the board obviously they have to have a mindset of diversity but more people got to come into the room and as more people come into the room and they hold the conversations and they actually hear the policies it's really a win and there's some i, I can't say there are some things happening um with a lot of conversations. I'm going I'm gonna say it here. I'm gonna say it right now. I'm gonna get my cuff again cuz I'm gonna need it for what people ain't gonna believe what I'm about to say out my mouth. I'm gonna have the Republicans get us uh reparations in Georgia. Mm. That right. That right. I got a friend right now. I got a couple. I got a couple of friends right now that's like, "You know what? We going to get reparations in Georgia. I mean, what's what's the worst that can happen? They going to spend the money and put it right back in the economy? That's the worst that can happen. I mean, cuz honestly, if we think about it, the Republican Party is the is the party of reparations. 40 acres and a mule. 40 acres and a mule is a Republican party, a Republican policy. Special field order number 15. Is a piece of Republican legislation. The Freedmen's Bureau, Republican policy. You know who got rid of the Freedmen's Bureau? A Democrat. And I don't want to hear that party switch shit because people love to say, oh, the party switch. No, because in the 1950s, Lyndon B. Johnson said, hey, listen, these niggas getting too uppity and we got to give them a little bit so that we can dial them back down because they've got something right now they never had before. They got political power to match their uppiness and we got to do something about it. And 10 years later, he came out his mouth and said, uh, came out of his mouth and said, I'll have these niggers voting Democrat for the next 200 years. He said that in the 1960s. So if LBJ said it in the 1960s, he had these niggers voting Democrat for the next 200 years, and it's 2023, which is, let's just say he said it, I think he said it in like 1964. So 1964 to 2023. It's 59 years. 59 years. 59 is on the way to 200. So if the man said, I'll have these niggas vote Democrat for 200 years, and we 59 years in, the niggas are still voting Democrat, did the party switch? <laughs> Don't sound like the party switch. It sounds like people are right in line with what they need to happen. And again, I burn them all down and start something new. But get educated and understand the process. Don't let nobody try and tell you, oh, you challenging an election that you feel like you was done wrongly. Don't let them tell you that that's a Rico. I don't never, I don't want them to come to you, Todd, and you feel like you know that you won the election in District 3. And because you challenged the election, because you feel like some hanky panky went on, because you think that, hey, listen, I got this video and I know for a fact I seen it. This person right here go and get a bunch of ballots from this place right here. You ain't finna tell me I lost to this person. No. Um, Mr. Rhodes, sir, you keep on. You're gonna have these co-conspirators and these people who feel this light along with you, sir. We're gonna charge you with a Rico. What? And I beat some boy, listen. Boy, <laughs> boy, they gonna see the bulldog come out for real. They gonna see the bulldog come out for real, bro, because you have that right to question if you feel like you was done wrong in an election. And this is what this process has been to me while everybody is saying, oh, Trump and them got a Rico and 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 those people falsified paperwork. And no, they didn't. They kept going with the process because if they so happen to have gone to a judge like the person in Connecticut. And. 
got him to say, oh, we're going to overturn this. That wasn't right. Your paperwork have to be in order because if you didn't go along with the process and complete your paperwork by the time that they said the paperwork was supposed to be done, then you forfeit because you didn't do everything you were supposed to do. That's like applying for a loan and it's a deadline and it's an affidavit you ain't supposed to turn in. But then people say you wasn't qualified, but you know you was qualified and you go to the next person and they're like, oh, OK, yeah, you was qualified. All right, we're going to go and pull this affidavit that was due. But you didn't turn in the affidavit. Then automatically, hey, man, I'm sorry, but the affidavit was still due and you didn't turn it in. So because you didn't get it turned in, man, we, we're going to. Sorry, we're going to have to catch you next time. We can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. So when you understand the process and you know what's going on, man, you, you do the right thing like Spike Lee. So, um, you know, it's learning. We're going to come up out of it. Um, We're going to do better. I'm, I want to see my people leave all them parties alone and we get we get the people's party going. You know what I'm saying? We get the the the. The, the real Black Panthers going. We get something else that where we are truly out here educating the people on policies that are taking place, the policies that we're doing. We're being fiscally responsible. Um, we're paying attention that there are some social issues that need to be addressed and there should be some programs in place to take care of them. But those programs are really habilitating and fixing people so that they can in turn be the best of the best of the best. Um, that's what that's supposed to be, and that's what that needs to be. And we're going to do it. We're we, we, we going to make it happen. As long as we got people like you and, and people like uh, Rashida Edwards and people like uh, Robert Bryan and people like Vanetta Lanier and people like uh, Keisha Gibson Carter from there, as long as we have those type people vying to get on the council and to make the policy for us happen, and we're going to be all right. That's just my, uh, that's my thoughts on that. We're going to be good and all right. We just got to get... We just got to get y'all in office, man. We got to get the people to to understand what the hell is really going on. Absolutely, my brother. Absolutely. I just hope everybody just, like, wake up and see, like, what makes sense to keep going down the same road and then we keep having the same result. Mm -hmm. Let's go down a different road with some different people who already been down the other road, who already seen the obstacles and go down a different path. So therefore, we can see growth, development, betterment of community, you know, of people in general, man. Like, I, I love people. And, and, bro, I respect you so much because despite of whether we agree or disagree, you, I know you're a solid guy. We went to school together, we graduated together, and I know that. So despite of, I know where your heart is. I know how you was raised. And that's important, man. And what you're doing, bro, I, I totally respect you to the fullest. And so with that being said, that go to show you that regardless of the fact when you know you know and a lot of people man they don't know how to take that and then they get mad and they just catch fits but man life's a trip that's the only thing i got to say enjoy the ride and i just i just hope everybody just wake up and put the best people that's gonna be a servant to the people and they ain't gonna Switch out on the people, mm -hmm. sell out, or be bought. Absolutely. I hope they do. I, I think they will um, do the right thing. I pray that they will do the right thing. Because um, they have to. I mean, there's so many people. I'm seeing people that I've never seen politically active, active during this election. Right. Mm -hmm. Telling people, hey, you need to get vote. You need to vote. You need to do this. You need to do that. Um, you need to. Uh, you need to pay attention to this candidate. I need you to get your people to vote like I'm, I'm seeing the clubs get activated. 
I don't remember the clubs getting activated um, when Stacey Abrams ran. Um, I don't remember seeing the clubs get activated when um, when Biden ran, at least not here, not locally. Um, right. I think they did in Atlanta and other big cities, but as far as Savannah was concerned, I didn't see them get, get activated. But now I'm seeing them get activated. I'm seeing them say, yo, we have got to be on it with this. We have got to go and vote for the proper person. Um, so Should they better. If they guess what? Good, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna have no club to party in. I'm trying to tell. We ain't got number one. Now. You ain't gonna have no business to support. Come on now. Come on now. You better. We gonna see Tuesday's the night, man. Tuesday is the night. I'm trying to I'm trying to debate now where I'm gonna go party at. If I'm gonna come to the west side, you know, and and do man, it over there. everywhere. <laughs> well, so hit everywhere. I'm going to I'm going to do a show. I'm going to do election watch. We're going to do an election mm-hmm. watch show. So I don't know if I want to do it from the comforts of my home studio, if I want to do it from the comforts of the office. Or if I want to go out in the streets and be with some, you know, be with some folk, you know, be with you and Rashida mm-hmm. over there. Or well, listen, man, side. you, I'm inviting you right now. Okay, that's two times. You are more than welcome. That's two times. They come. Two times. I'm a, uh, I'm gonna check with Rashida, man. We're gonna talk. See if we got some yes, good sir. internet over there. See if we got some Xfinity popping over there. You know, so, <laughs> if we got some good internet popping, then uh, we're gonna have to take this show on the road. See, I, I did something purposely. I purposely invested in this equipment that I can take on the road with me and I can go anywhere yes, I need to go. So um we gonna see what's up and uh we definitely gonna do the show from somewhere and we're gonna do a live watch night man. We're gonna watch these elections uh results as they roll in and uh we're gonna keep it moving. It's going to be a long night. I'm telling you now for water main break if a water main break over there at the, at the, at the election office, man, we're going to have to, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't want to hear no water main break. I don't want to hear the electric, the electricity went out. I damn sure don't want to hear the internet went down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we we got to definitely be on their necks um, when it comes to this election because I just, I, can, I feel it. I'm like, um, I'm like my boy. Uh, uh, I can feel it coming in here tonight. <laughs> oh, For real, boy, I feel like they go pull some hanky panky. So because I feel they may pull some hanky panky, man, we gotta we gotta make sure everything is on. Board. I've been I've been hearing some things out there. Yeah, yeah, I've been hearing some things out there. <sighs> well, we gonna see. But- I don't even I don't even let it describe me. Right. As you shouldn't. As you shouldn't. All right, what's going on with this here? What you doing? I don't even know what you're doing. I don't know what you got going on. Yeah, okay. Twitter. Okay, yeah, you good. I had to make sure we've been having all these sound difficulties, man. I had to make sure everybody can uh get down with the get down. But um, yeah, man. It, uh, we've been hearing stuff. Hopefully, we can just hold these people accountable. Make sure everything is right. Stay on their necks. Watch them. Um, I hope you got your team of poll watchers to go and watch those polls and watch them. Um, when they're counting the election uh, results to make sure as everything is on the up and up. Um, because you know this is needed. That's another thing that the the party apparatus has taught me since being in there is that. There's so many different things that they um, can do and they're responsible for, just candidates are responsible for and can do to make sure that their election runs smooth. These are things that I wouldn't have learned, um, you know, even knowing all the people that I have known and do know, do know in the Democrat Party. They never taught me any of this stuff. They never taught me about election watching and poll watching and, and vote watching and precinct managers and party managers they never taught me that Uh oh there they go they go kill her they go kill her (laughs) oh that's that's a big daddy baby right there (laughs) but um you know 
we it's a lot of things going on. I seen this um the other day from Better Savannah when they were talking about um uh do you remember the 2019 election? Our last city election, the election right before COVID-19 emerged. The election with seven of nine seats change over to progressive minded people who believe that changing business as usual at City Hall was possible. It was an amazing beginning, marked by a spirit of great enthusiasm and optimism. There were many close races. It was hard fought. The city was consumed with hopefulness, fueled by a basic belief that Savannah had finally reached a tipping point in which best practices, fairness, and sound policy would more frequently become a governing reality. It was a renaissance election. Uh-oh, Mike McCann in this thing. Shouts out to Mike in the building. Coach Rose, my guy. What's up, man? <laughs> D6, man. District 6, man. You got to vote for this man, man. Mike McCann for District 6. All right, Cool guy, man. Cool, great guy, man. That's 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 the other yes, coach yeah. that I like, man. That's, that's two coaches on deck, man, that have really helped steer the youth right in this city. I think they're... Uh, both you guys' mindsets can definitely help get these young men and these young ladies um, with y'all resources into a better better position. Um, could, can foster some greatness in the city. Okay. Um, it was a renaissance election in which voters believed that tourism would finally be managed and balanced so as to respect residents' quality of life and the ordinance governing short-term vacation rentals would be actually enforced. Universally, voters thought our historic status would be fully protected and sacred grounds like the weeping time would be preserved. I, I got like I got some things to talk about at the weeping time because like we'll talk about it. So it was believed neighborhoods would be just as important as tourism infrastructure, like the arena in the canal district. And the many poor, neglected neighborhoods would receive their fair share of city services. It was expected that the city council would begin to address the issues of growth and gentrification, not to mention a commitment to start negotiations with SCAD to become a true and full partner in Savannah. With they non-taxpaying asses. Um, <laughs> many people now realize that the Renaissance election was quickly derailed. It began when everyone on the city council lost equal access to the meeting agenda. This autocratic move was purposeful and it resulted in a suppression of democracy, not to mention igniting the contention amongst council members. Three of the newly elected aldermen quickly forgot their progressive campaign promises and aligned themselves with the mayor, thus protecting business as usual. Another switch sides to be in the majority and for the ceremonial title of being mayor pro tem. All of them have been richly rewarded with massive campaign contributions. Over a million dollars for the loyalists has been disclosed. Is Savannah a community or a commodity? Well, we have a second chance on November 7th to right the ship and to craft better public policy. Policy based on a level playing field where most of the city's efforts aren't focused on bringing in more tourism, more short-term vacation rentals, more contracts for out-of-town companies, and local legacy contractors. We owe it to our community to correct the myopic direction Savannah has slavishly followed, and that's only possibly, only po I'm guessing it should be only possible, because it clearly says that's only possibly if you vote. No, it's only possible if you vote. Don't, it says vote like it was 2019. Don't vote like it's 2019. Vote like it's 2023, and you realize the error of your ways in 2019, and do right. Out of everything that was said outside of local legacy contractors, because I'm a legacy contractor. I've been in demolition since I was 12 years old, and I turned 35 years old just two Sundays ago. So, no, we're not going to vote like it was 2019. We're not going to vote to not have legacy contractors, local legacy contractors, because I'm a local legacy contractor, but my legacy should be protected. 
I should not be voted against because I choose to be conservative or Republican or not a Democrat. I think that is wrong because I employ local people. I provide money for local families. I provide local opportunities for people who may not have an opportunity elsewhere. So when you remove contracts out of my hand, you're not only hurting me, you're hurting other people in the city, typically black people in the city. Although I am diverse and I do hire other races and ethnicities, let's just be real. So shouts out to Better Savannah for that, though. Um, that was that was a good right. That was a good right. I appreciate it. And um, if y'all haven't heard me before, I'm going to say it again. Here's my rundown. Post one, Rashida Edwards. Post two, I'm sorry, Pete Roster is a pretty cool guy. He was a coach or all at it. But, dude, you are campaigning on going in there, helping Van Johnson get in off, get back in office, and helping him get his agenda through. That is, psh, boy, you canceled your damn self with that one. Auntie all the way, Alicia Blakely. Um, shouts out to the fact that she waking up to all the craziness. Everybody wake up on their own time. She doing it. I, I'm... I'm appreciative on the fact that, you know, she is waking up to the, the foolishness. And I told your ass to stop saying that Van Johnson was a Republican choice. I told your ass to stop saying that. You kept saying, he's a Republican, he's a closet Republican, he's a Republican, these Republicans are paying him money. And what did he do? He black girl magic your ass times three. Oh, you going to call me a Republican? <laughs> I'm going to show you. Daddy Biden. DNC. I need Stacey Abrams and some other people. Oh, don't worry, man. We got you. Yeah, but Shimon and I, I'm, I'm going to take a poop because I'm Biden. Yeah, we got you. And what did he get? Stacey, Nakima Williams, and Keisha Lance Bottoms. Three powerful black Democrat women out of the state of Georgia to come down and prove to the city of Savannah, hey, guys, I'm Van Johnson. I'm not a Republican. Look at these three black women from the Democrat Party that are here to support me. Not my opponents, but me. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I mean, that's what the fuck he said. That's what he said. So, you know, you set yourself up for that one, Auntie. You, 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 you set, you set yourself up. Oh, man. Bros is in Atlanta. Bros said that uh, KLB is a sellout. Yes. Anybody who paid attention to Keisha Lance Bottoms uh, failed four years as the mayor of Atlanta. She is definitely that. So I'm glad you guys got rid of her. But, I mean, you put the Brandon guy in there. Brandon doesn't seem to be doing that much better. But, you know, things happen, guys. Eh. All right. Let's see what else we got going on in the area. Um. Oh, I am happy about that. Supreme Court to review Trump era ban on gun stock, on the bump stocks. Hey man, it's against uh, it's against the two way, bro. It's it's against the two way. This is infringing on the right to own and bear arms. That is an arm. That is a weapon. Your right should never be infringed. So it's going to go to the Supreme Court, and I do believe that it um, it's going to be overturned. And I got some friends who are mad, I'm like, oh, he banned the bump stocks. Well, listen, he had to play the game, and that's what it is. The man knew that it was going to go to Supreme Court and it was going to get overturned, but you got it's, it's, this is chess. This isn't checkers. And sometimes you got to give up a pawn in order to move on the board for you to got dang on win on the backside, and that's what it was. He gave that up knowing it was going to get challenged, going to go to Supreme Court, and they're going to be like, nope, nope, sorry, guys, you can't infringe on that. And then he's going to have a win. That's just what it is. Oh, we got an update on – um. Dickens out of Atlanta. Dickens is an empty suit. Only good for taking pictures and saying, yes, I'm boss. I <laughs> hey, man, you know what? There's going to be some people who are going to be mad with that. But to the people who get mad, I just want to say that you can't handle the truth. And that's just what that is. Your ass can't handle the truth. All right. So, um, you know, it is what it is, man. Hopefully, you know. 
people people wake up and they see the truth and and things get right. So yeah, man, this uh, bump stop thing is going to get overturned, man. I am so man. Listen, boy, Todd, I, my dog is two a. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what I'm saying. To each his own is what he says. To each they owe. But he does support the two a man, and I respect that. I'm happy about that. We are going to get, we are going to get some classes going for these youth. Okay, um, we're going to teach them what it means to properly bear arms. I mean, they get their education from music videos. Bro, we have to, man. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto teaching them, the streets teaching them. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's do things the right way, man. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you, you really can't stop it. Let's be honest, you know, because I refuse, especially as my rights, to give up my rights unless I do something that forces me to give up my rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But it's all about being responsible. Mm -hmm. You got to be responsible. Again, you can have any form of weapon. You can have a tank, but if it ain't no... The person don't know how to operate it. Then what? We sick. So <laughs> that's right. What, we right. sick, and we can. Right. It's just a tank. It's just a tank. Yeah. But it, you know, when it comes to the weapons, man, it's just important to know safety. Um, I mean, I, I have a true living testimony about safety, and it's important. So again, it, it's not the weapon. It's, it's the person with the weapon. Mm -hmm. And you just got to know what to do. Um, and it's important for kids. Let kids know if they find a weapon, they see a weapon, act like it's a snake. If a poisonous snake, get away from it. Tell an adult about it, you know? And then some kids, you know, they probably the age where you can have that conversation with them and unload it and give it to them and let them touch it and feel it and see it and, and let them know, like, yeah, okay understand what this can do right you know right now it's safe There's nothing in the chamber no clippers in you know these are things to look for to check for mm -hmm. you know and this education man it, it, it the word says people perish because of lack of knowledge yeah so the more knowledge that's given the more lack of perishing right we have yeah you're absolutely correct and that's what we have man we have a, a lack of knowledge or a lack of proper knowledge um, being bestowed to these to these kids when it comes to weapons of any kind, um, whether it be, you know, these phones and the Internet. I mean, that, that is truly a weapon. Look at how they're Ooh, bullying man, music. people, man. Oh, listen. The, the, so, you know, I'm a career DJ. Been DJing for uh, 17, 17, 17, 17. No. Yeah, yeah. 17 years now. 17 years I've been full-time DJ. Mm -hmm. And I made a stance not too long after Club Rain died. I made the stance that I would not DJ certain crowds, um, certain venues. I won't play certain music because I noticed what it was doing to our people. Um, people would go to hire me for birthday parties, graduation parties, things of that nature. And, um, we'd have a conversation. I'm like, oh yeah, well just know I don't play certain music There's certain things that I will not play. I don't even have downloaded. Oh, well, we're paying you. Well, you're not paying me to do that. You can pay someone else because I'm not going to play that. Um, there's certain energies, there's certain vibrations that I will not feed to my folk. I just won't do it. I see what it's doing. Um, <laughs> This may, uh, I don't care. This is me. Fuck it. So 1308, right? The venue. Um, I think, I think they just, uh, old girl just leased it out to do sloppy toppy over there on, um, in between Henry and Anderson on Montgomery street. The address is 1308 Montgomery street. Uh, it used to be the uptown. Okay. Uptown had a very, very negative stigma to not only it, but to that property itself. Right. I'm surprised that they're even giving Sloppy Toppy the alcohol license because they really wasn't going to give anybody an alcohol license. Well, I know why they're getting it, because she donated to the campaigns of the majority. But anyway, we'll talk about that at a later date. Um, when I was over 1308, 
there were two people that I would never let perform in there when I was managing that spot. And that was Cap Street Hershey and Quando Rondo. Again, this was, you know, this was Pacquiao Mayweather time. You know what I mean? So think about, you know, when that fight was compared to where we are now. So I wouldn't let him perform at that spot because uh, every time people or every time they went somewhere, there was always an issue. There was a fight. There was a shooting. There was something. And because of the stigma that they had because of Uptown, 1308, even though we had nothing to do with Uptown outside of we shared the same that they once was in the building we now occupy, they still treated us like Uptown. That's that's what the city of Savannah does. They will treat you like the people who were there previously because they think you are going to do what they did. And that wasn't even my mission. Um, So I was like, nah. They, they, I'm sorry they can't perform. I know they're doing things in the city and the kids like them and people want them. I mean, I had people with sweet 16s and 18-year-old and birthday parties and all type of stuff that wanted Cap Street and wanted uh wanted Quando to perform at. And I was like, nah, bro, I can't do it. I'm sorry. They cannot perform in my building because every time they uh, attend an event, something happens. That's not going to happen. We won't be a victim. I love my business. I can't allow it to go down. Um, one time dealing with Uncle Mac, and it's funny I said the Pacquiao Mayweather fight because it was that night. Um, we were showing the fight, and um, I had Amarada, Amaretta, and um, I can't think of dude name, but he made the song Water, and um, it was hot at the time. I had them come through and perform that night. Um. Uncle Mac was coming through. He had to plug on the on the fights and whatnot, so we was gonna be showing the fight. Well, a video, uh, a flyer was made with Cap Street Hershey name put on it, saying that he was gonna perform. And I called Mac, and uh, me and Mac really had words because he knew how I felt about two particular those two particular people performing. Well, um, you know, he made promises. Hey, man, ain't nothing gonna happen, man. I promise you, little bro, everything gonna be all right. Whoop de whoop. Bro, I tell you no lie. I told that man, I was like, yo, all right, listen, you done put this out here. I'm really pissed off. You done marketed and promoted this here. Here's the deal. He walks in. He performs. He walks out. That's it. Ain't no chilling. Ain't no nothing. In and out. And the police will escort him in, and they will escort him out. Man comes in, starts performing. I don't know what the hell happened on stage. I was in my damn office. I look up on the screen. This nigga fighting his DJ on stage. Got him escorted out. And that was it. I always move in my right mind when I say no to certain things. Because it's just God, you know what I'm saying? Giving that proper... Uh, uh oh. Is we, oh, his phone maybe died out. It's just God giving that proper, uh, that proper guidance to life as it is, man. And I've always stood 10 toes down on that. So when it comes to this music, and what we've experienced and what we are experiencing in life, we have to put our foot down, people. I'm going to put my foot down. That's just what's going to happen because I am me. I am me. And I'm going to let it be known that you got to stand 10 toes on it, bro. And that ain't right. So I respect Kathy Barnett for saying what she said because it's things that just has to be said and stood 10 toes down on, you know? Oh, man. All right. So it seems like uh, bro's phone may have died. 
That's two dead phones in one night. Dang, boy, we we, we boy, we battery killers. We battery killers. I guess uh I guess they should have took advantage of the captain's note when he said, Hey, make sure all your devices are charged or on the charger. Oh, oh, oh. All right, what's going on? What's this? Okay. All right, guys, I just got something in from sis. Something special. Let's go ahead and put it up on the screen, shall we? All right, y'all. Land's giving. Um, we're giving to the less fortunate. We are looking for coats, blankets, hygiene kits, and hot breakfasts. Um, hot breakfast items on November 24, 2023, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We're going down to River Street by the Bohemian Hotel in the Hyatt. All right, so that's down there where the big globe is, all right? Right there on River Street. We're going to be giving away coats, blankets, hygiene kits, and hot breakfasts to those who are less fortunate. Um, for those who don't know, there are plenty of uh, homeless people here in the city of Savannah. Um, so... Shouts out to sis. Um, it's Landy birthday, and then how does she celebrate her birthday? Well, you know, giving to the less fortunate. So we're gonna be out on River Street, right there by the Big Globe, um, helping the less fortunate. So if you can, come on and donate some coats and stuff, and um, some hygiene kits and some blankets. Let's help them get through this cold weather that's coming up. All right. All right, guys, let's see. Is there anything else that I have in the bag? I think there's a few more things in the bag. Let's find out. Shouts out to everybody who's tuned in, everybody who's uh watching live, people who are going to be catching the replay. I appreciate your replay, folk. Make sure you uh leave a... Uh, Leave a comment on the replay. Oh, my boy is in the building. Why why have I not seen a comment from him? Where you at? If if you here, you know who I'm talking to, player. Give me a shout out. Give me a give me a comment. Throw a comment in the box. Um let's go ahead and uh let's check this. Y'all know about the money? Y'all, y'all know the money is the money looking funny. Some things happening with the U.S. dollar. Oh, the the jobs reports came back. Jobs reports came back and said that um the jobs did not the jobs wasn't jobbing. No, the work wasn't working. Numbers was down terribly. What you gonna do about it? Mm-mm-mm. Oh yeah. Israeli struck a refugee camp. That war is so garbage, bro. That war is so damn garbage. I don't even know. It makes my head hurt just thinking about it, honestly. It sucks, balls. Anyway, folk, we're approaching the 1030 mark. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. It was a good night. Um, shouts out to my dog, Todd Rose, for coming through. Shouts out to Robert Bryant for coming through. Um, shouts out to uh, Miss Rashida Edwards. Oh, man. Oh, damn. Mike McCann. Why is all these comments? Why are they all uh all of them coming in right now? All right, let's see. Uh Mike McCann. Mike McCann says he was raised on two live crew, two short, easy E and more. Still knew the difference in music lyrics and reality. Parents have to take ownership and teach values in life or the streets and music will. I mean, well, the parents, unfortunately, 
The parents do believe that this is reality in life, man. This this is their reality in life. You know, when you got artists who are saying, man, I'm real. This is real. This is real life. This is reality. What's a kid supposed to believe? And then, you know, they're all motivated by money. Let's call a spade a spade. They're motivated by money. So, mm, 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 mm. <sighs> all right, let's see. Uh, Kathy said the quiet part out loud that she did. Uh, who really believes the paraglider story? I don't. If it's real, they allowed it to happen. I do believe this was their 9-11 moment. I do. They allowed it to happen so they can do more of the BS that they would. That they want to do. Rose Amari Stoudemire don't help. Yeah. Definitely don't. Oh, man, guys. Quick, quick rundown again. Um, I don't think I made it all the way through my list. Uh, post one, Rashida Edwards. Post two, Alicia Blakely. Um, Vanetta Lanier has already clinched District one. District two, um, I like Tia Brightwell for District two. District three, my brother Todd Rose, he was just on with us. Um, District four, hey, guys, flip your coin. Flip, flip your coin, D4. D5, Robert Bryant. Um, we got some more conversations to have with Robert, but I um I am comfortable with the things, some of the things that I heard from him. And then um even the fact that he is amenable. He is amenable. And you know what? I'm gonna leave tonight on a couple of things that I definitely want and need to share with you. Oh, you know what? I can't do that just yet, y'all. I can't do that. I can't leave. I got to give you an opportunity. I have to give you an opportunity for those who want to give a shout because the phone lines are supposed to be open tonight. So since the phone lines are supposed to be open, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to open the phone lines. All right. 912 Nine three eight three. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna post a comment up in the on the screen, and uh, that'll be the phone number. And you guys, um, come on in. Give me a ring if you want to give a ring. I'll go ahead and let the um phone lines be open for a second. Let those phone lines be open for a second. Uh, make sure you get your call on, all right? 376-9383. Of course, the phone line is uh, 912. You know what I'm saying? Turn this Bluetooth on. Uh-huh. All right. And we in there. 912-376-9383. 912-376-9383. The number's on the screen. Go ahead and, uh, matter of fact, I'll put that off over there. I didn't mean for it to happen. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Leroy. To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail, press 2. Leroy (laughs) Jenkins. What's going on, protocol? Chilling God, what's good with your man? 
Man, up here in the A trying to maintain. Hey, man, listen. And not go ham. I understand. It's kind of hard to maintain and not go ham out here in these streets these days. That's for sure. Yeah, Unless somebody got to do it. You, hey, yeah, but you know what, what you said about it being a false way? I believe Adam Schill. He said the same thing. Problem is, 9-11 was a false flag, just like what they showing us is over there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they tell us it's paragliders, but y'all didn't pick up the plane that the paragliders jumped out of? Come on now. Come on now. Nah, I mean, they got their runways. They took off on the runways, and then they came in over the fence after the bulldozers hey, crashed hey. in it. <laughs> Look, look, I told my wife, maybe maybe they caught him during a shift change. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the best time to pull off a heist during a shift change. Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard earlier this week that uh, the leader of Hamas, that, they, that he doing interviews from Qatar. And Biden is thanking Qatar. But, mm. I mean, how's, how's the leader of Hamas... Never mind the fact that Hamas was formed by Israel, according to Rand Paul. Those are not my words. Those are his. Mm-hmm. I'm just repeating them. Mm-hmm. So you want to be mad at somebody, be mad at him. Mm-hmm. How about that? <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, they they, they said that uh, Hamas posted a picture of some Israeli children that they got in a tunnel somewhere, and Israel uh, carpet bombing everything. How do they know they ain't hitting their own children? Or, or do they not care? I don't think they care. There's a there's a cup man. Listen, they got some questionable military practices over there in Israel, bro. Israel do will they? kill their own. They will know that they have uh, military people on the ground, and they will still take them out of the game. Oh well, we we. We took out a Palestinian. We don't care. You know, it was likely they could have got killed anyway. So, you know, uh, here's what it is. Did we get the Palestinians, though? Like, they literally have this as yeah. doctrine. So, like, when you're dealing with people like that, like, bro, that's scary, man. That's scary. They have another piece oh, of doctrine. I know this one by name because it bothers me so much. It's called the Dahia Doctrine or the Dahia Doctrine, whichever you want to um, pronounce it as. Um where they will literally destroy civilian infrastructure because they don't want uh, Hamas to use said infrastructure. So when people are like, oh, they're blowing up the hospitals. No, they're not. No, yes, they are. They're, they're, it's called the Dahia Doctrine, the Dahia Doctrine. Well, they will destroy civilian infrastructure in order to not have Hamas use it. No, but they said that, you know, with all that technology, they knew that Hamas fired that uh, missile that hit the hospital. And Mm -hmm. then two days later, they said, well, now that we didn't do it because people started accusing them. Then they said, well, actually, the missile hit the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, I ain't over there. I don't see it. But I do see the story keeps changing. Over and over. I tell my children this. Look, I tell my children this. Uh, All you have to do is tell the truth one time. Mm -hmm. And after that, you're just repeating the same thing. When you lie, it changes. You got the compounds. The story keeps changing. And compounds and compounds and compounds. It's crazy, man. And then then, then for everything I've just said, (laughs) uh, I'm anti-Semitic. But making observations is not anti-Semitic. That's called uh, making the observation, <laughs> right? Like Auntie I mean, Kathy. Good night. Like Auntie Kathy, who was anti-black. Man, I was over. I've been fighting people on Twitter and throwing comments on people at Twitter simply because you know she said what she said, and they want to deem her as anti-black. Like how she hates herself. That's self-hate. How? Because I'm How, telling you that afraid to not vote blue no matter who or addressing it, talking about it and calling no. black people dumb. Well, wait a minute. If you're doing dumb shit, you're dumb. Yeah. 
whether it's voting for the same people over and over again, whether it's sacrificing your own freedom to launder money or to cheat during an election. Oh, yeah. Well, it's only cheating when uh, the Republicans do it. When when Democrats do it, it's ballot harvesting. It's no, it's 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 fortifying an election. You know that's oh, you know they said goodness. that I got to find. Uh, let me see if I can find this right quick. Oh man, uh, Time Magazine Shadow. Yeah, hey, you, you heard about what happened to Eric Adams? Oh, when yeah. His, uh, campaign manager or whoever she was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right when he landed in uh, D.C. and he said, you know what? We turned this plane around. We going home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and I knew this was going to happen, that they was going to start eating their own. But, but what is happening in Israel is exposing the Republicans for who they are. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Want. As far as uh, uh, we what what Nikki Nikki Haley said? Finish the job. Finish the job. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's what she said. Well, if, if, if Palestinians say that about Israelis, uh, then they are anti-Semitic, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. E- even though they're not from there, <laughs> they just showed up with a piece of paper and said, "This ours, get out." Not to mention they was terrorizing the area way before that. Mm-hmm. I heard a lady call in on the radio the other night, and she was so like yeah, empathetic, and she she said, "Well, you know, you know, they've been run out of every country that they 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 have been in," but she never said why. <laughs> she she never went into why. Because when you start going into why, then you start finding out some things that uh, let you know they're not uh, chosen <laughs> like mm-hmm. people like to label them. Mm-hmm. They stolen, not chosen. You know, it, <laughs> yeah, chosen people, right? Stolen, not chosen. Right. I don't. I don't remember seeing the word Israeli anywhere in the Bible. I've seen Israelite many times. Mm-hmm. But not Israeli, mm-hmm. and and my my children pointed this out to me one day. You know how you forget stuff after you ain't been to elementary school in decades. <laughs> they said, "Well, that ish means kind of, but not really." Well, Jewish. <laughs> let's let's apply that there. It's weird, man. We're in a weird place. But they, I think they ran it so close to the Ukraine that, you know, people are, a lot of people are seeing it. And some people may say they're pro-Palestinian, but it just might mean that they're anti-bullshit. Right. And I think that's what it boils down <laughs> you know? to. I think it boils down to them being anti-bullshit as much as it is, and not as much as it is pro-Palestinian. Plus, you know, people see what's really happening with the Palestinian people, man. They really see that they're being hurt. They see that there is, is literally a genocide going on. Um, and they understand that. So, you know, I got a friend, man. Um, her, her family's over in Palestine right now. She's had some friends that have been killed. Um, and she's a Republican. She's, she's a Republican. So it's like oh, it's that's gotta hurt. It it does, man. It 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 really does. Um she messaged me during the show. I'm gonna message her afterwards and um see what's going on. Um probably link up with her this yeah, weekend. That's gotta hurt. Um I, I heard this guy, he he's a Jewish guy. He said that um well Palestine never existed. Show me their currency. Show me their, you know, uh um uh, Constitution or whatever, you know, show me all these different things that uh, let you know it's, it was a country. Well, I can't show you, I might not can't show you them things, but I can show you show you that they participate in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And if they participate <laughs> in the Olympics, then I mean... It must be a place. Gotta be a place. 
<laughs> Gotta be a place. I don't think they just let. I don't think they just let anybody just walk up and participate in the Olympics. Shit, if that's the Where case, you from? It, Nowhere. Wakanda, nigga. Wakanda. <laughs> we from Wakanda. <laughs> Shit, we gonna let made up play. Well, Palestine's not real, bitch. Neither is Wakanda. And Palestine's been in the Olympics. Has Wakanda, motherfucker? Shit. Yeah, really. I mean, per I mean, his, per his, what he's saying. Show me where Wakanda. Show me where they have an actual charter. Okay, hold on. Let me go pull up this here Disney. Let's watch the movie. Here's a whole government, nigga. The CIA worked with him, nigga. And you told me to show you that it happened, nigga. Here it is, nigga. It's, it's it is evidence. You're watching it. It happened, nigga. It happened. You're watching it. That's the film, nigga. Well, nigga, you asked me to show it to you, bitch. I'm showing it to you, like. See, I'm I'm that asshole when it comes to this shit. Like, don't play with me, nigga. Don't don't play with me. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm the same way. I I hit up this other Jewish guy on his program, and I said I said I put a question in his chat. I said, so the English are from England. Where are Jewish people from? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he he said, "See, that's just being silly." No, it's actually be, it's being snarky, but you get my point, dude. You mm -hmm. show me where y'all left there. Mm -hmm. How about that? Show me that. And they can't. You talking about Palestine didn't exist? Show me when y'all left. Oh. And I and I actually I really love when they try and say that. Well, yeah, we came out of Egypt. You know, Moses led us out of Egypt. You talking about the Egypt where it was black people at? <laughs> right. Oh man, <laughs> all black people and then this. Uh, come on, man. Come on, and man, they. I mean, they go far with it. They go far with it. You know, now that all this is going on, you hear these different clips like this other guy talking about. Um, uh, we we gave you your Messiah, so you should worship all Jewish people. What? I thought it said son of God, not son of Jewish people. Right. <laughs> man, Lord have mercy. Good. Them folk, man. Them folk, oh, yeah. man. Too much power. And I didn't think all power. See, that? that's what we were talking earlier about. Power can see, you know, corrupting people. And that's that's where it is, man. To the point of where, you know, on the screen right now, it says uh, the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. This was a Time magazine article that they released on February 4th, 2021. And they told how they literally stole the election. Oh, wow. They when did this article drop? 2021. February 4th, 2021. Time wow. Magazine. They were just like, yep, we did it now. It's over. Joe Biden's been certified. He's inaugurated. Let's tell the truth on what really happened, people. We had to do it to save democracy. To save democracy. <laughs> I'm tired. Meanwhile, they trampled democracy by cheating. Yep. And that's what they do, man. They that's cheat. They, 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 they cheat their asses off. And it's okay. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, they hide behind black folks. So it's okay. It's okay when oh, they yeah. hide behind black folks. The same way with the confused community. Mm -hmm. They slap that on us, too. Mm -hmm. And hide behind uh, black women's skirts. Mm hmm. Every it's time. disgusting. It really is. It really is. And sickening. You know, and, I, and I'm tired of the, the the dumb black people that Kathy Barnett was talking about falling for it. Yep. But you can't call them dumb black people. Oh, my gosh, bro. Them people are dumb, bro. If they dumb, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called being accurate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> interesting i'm learning out i'm i'm learning new stuff in this system and i was watching a video and they literally just put all my comments from another video in, in, in hey tell me this i heard i heard somebody else that was doing the live he said that um on your side you know this your show mm -hmm. that the font is different now when you're trying to read the comments is that do you see that? Um, I don't know, cause I'm, I'm. I, it depends on what he's using, cause I'm using a whole another scraper. I use another scraper that throws it off into my uh, OBS system. So, I I don't know. I well, I can put it this way. 
the con the, the the font the font that you guys see on the screen for the number is not the same font that I am looking at over here on the side. Okay. I thought it might have been something tricky that, you know, YouTube is doing so, you know, you guys can't read the comments because, you know, when you read the comments, it's not you saying it, you just reading it. And, I mean, how can they hold you responsible for what someone is putting in the comments? You know what I'm saying? They don't like what's being said. Oh, they are doing that now. They are going ham on that. They are smacking down what people say in the comments um, to the person whose video it is. They are definitely doing that. So um, you can't even say rumble on YouTube. I'm, I'm interested to see how this um, how this is going to go um, when it's all said and done. What kind of strikes am I going to get? Um, wow. Because, you know. Wow! Likely. <laughs> they don't want you advertising another platform. Yeah, they don't. Meanwhile, they got tons of commercials for everything. Come on now, <laughs> hey man, that's their direct competitor, so they don't want us, you know, saying what the truth is. You know, it is what it is. All right, man, it is ten forty. I am getting the munchies. I did have me some fish and grits a couple of hours ago, but uh, that's about gone now. Uh oh, what is this? Hey, is two guys still open? Uh, two guys, two guys. I don't think so. Yeah. I haven't heard yeah. that being mentioned in a long time, man. Let's find out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look right quick. Yeah, man, I, I was kicking it down there around the '90s, so you know it was Gomez and the whole new club, New Jack. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I had some memories back there. Boy, listen, boy. That boy said Bo Go, Maze. Going to the NCO. <laughs> oh, yeah. That man said Bo Maze. Boy, listen. Bo Maze. I know Bo Maze been gone for a minute. Bo Maze got turned into like a contractor oh. business or something. Oh, wow. Wow. There it is. I know that's a dark road riding out there. Boy. I mean, it might have changed by now, but good night. Back then, no light. It's Number, still pretty dark. The only now. lights you saw was headlights. It's still pretty dark now. It's still pretty dark now. They have um they have a uh, update. You know, it used to be only one Walmart on that strip. Um, now it's like three or four of them on the same strip, like two or three neighborhood WalMarts. Wow. Well, hey, you you heard about Hillary? Some Hillary like and school, uh. Ain't it? Well, she she was doing some speech for Sheila Jackson Lee, and some dude asked her about uh, her oh. husband's twenty seven trips to Upstate to uh, uh, the buddy who it? got drug Saint out, James Island. Yeah, but he got drug out. Shirt. Mm-hmm. Ripped up his man's shirt and everything. <laughs> and, and she was at some other place speaking, and somebody else got up and called her a warmonger, right uh-huh. on the right. Uh huh. Yep. And the whole panel went in on them. Yeah, man, it's crazy. They 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 starting to eat themselves, man. They are definitely starting to eat themselves. So you know, you know, I just stay the course and hope that um we make it through this thing um unscathed or as unscathed as we possibly can. Yeah, I see, because. Because Israel not getting the support they think they deserve, mm-hmm. I just I just prayed that, that you know, because I pray the Lord stops their attempts at a false flag over here yeah. to try and you know gin up some su- contrived support based on another act. Yeah, because it's I don't put none past them. I don't put it past me then. I think I I really think that it's uh it's literally on the way, man. They're gonna do something. They ain't got no choice but to do something. Yeah, because nobody's listening to Amari. Right. It's time to call him what he is. Since that's the only place you can study the tour and eat kosher food, go over there and stay there. How about that? And read the Talmud and really find out what they think about you. Mm-hmm. The seven foot Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I could agree with that. 
I I can agree with that. Give him a goddamn gong. Give him a mustache and a cigar. Oh, man. Well, no, right? She was Jackson Lee over there uh, cussing her own staff out and running for mayor of Houston. But don't care about that place no more than she cared about black people as a member of the uh, black congressional congress. Mm-hmm. That's crazy how she is. Literally, she knows her time is up in Congress, so now she's running for mayor. That's what they do. They can't get a real job. If, I guess. I mean, Diane Feinstein stayed in there till she died. Same way with John Lewis. And uh, uh, when uh, Isaacson left shortly, but he died shortly after. Mm-hmm. I mean, and... We're going to see how, how long Biden lasts after he's out. Huh. I don't even think he's going to make it out. I don't think he's going to make it out. Say that one more time. So I don't think he's going to make it out. I think he's going to be like fine. I don't know. Out. You think they're going to slide uh, Gruesome Newsome in there to run instead? Possibly. That guy. Shit, he fell down the stairs like <laughs> Biden the other day. You saw him playing basketball with them Chinese kids. Nah. When one of them took him out. I ain't seen that. I just, yeah. He, I just saw the funny Yeah, he went to visit, uh, he, he went over there to visit, uh, Xi. Xi Jinping. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what you doing over, over there? Being the mouthpiece for the Democratic Party and acting like, I guess, a surrogate president. Mm. I mean, the surrogate president we got, we got Obama. We got, uh, well, no, nah, not Kamala. She not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> not smart enough at all. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, man. All right, brother. I got two more videos I'm getting ready to get into, and then I'm going to go ahead and call it a night for us tonight. I appreciate you, as always, for giving us a shout, coming in and sharing your perspective on things, man. Uh, I'll be up in Atlanta. I don't know if I'm make it by the end of this year. But I do know I'll be up there at the top of the year because of Savannah Chatham Day at the uh, at the State House. So I got to go ahead and and be up in there and get my oyster roast on. That's what's so, up. Let me know. I, most definitely, man. We'll we'll link up while I'm up there and have a good time, man. I got to call my dog the Black 007, man, and pull him into this thing too. <laughs> We're gonna make some things happen. <laughs> yeah. But I right, so, man. Appreciate sure. you for calling in, man. I'll talk to you next week, player. A shizzle. I already got to hold it down. All right. Yep. One time for my dog, Leroy. Yeah, guys. I mean, his last name ain't Jenkins, but if you guys seen the video that I'm talking about, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh-uh. All right, y'all. Let me, Um, I'm going to play this. So these are a couple of clips from, um, like I said, I be at on Twitter, man. I be giving people business. I don't like fake ass people, bro. And I feel like you know, Twitter, Twitter is just a place for people just to go and try to be something. And, you know, my thing is, if you're going to be it, be it, man. Fight. Fight the power. Fight. Check this out. This is me fighting the millage rate. Check it. Let's go. Paragraph one. All government of right. Paragraph one. All government of right originates with the people, is founded upon their will only and is instituted solely for the good of the whole. Public officers are the trustees and servants, underlining servants of the people, and are at all times amenable to them. Paragraph two, the people of this state have the inherent right of regulating their internal government. Governments is instituted for the protection, security, and benefit, underlining benefit of the people, and at all times have the right to alter, reform the same whenever the public good may require it. People, we talking about the public good, and right now the public good is not maintaining, as we're stating, this here current millage rate. Now it sounds good to maintain, and we're not raising, but if we look at what happened with the property values as of recently, they are all increasing. Some people's properties are increasing not at the will of their own. They didn't put no new paint, they didn't do no new yard work, they didn't put no new stairs up, they just 
increased because they got new neighbors. They increased because something else was built. That is not for the good of the people. I please, I ask you, I beg of you, no, I demand of you being amenable to we the people, please take a moment, step back, look at how it is hurting people. Mr. Benton mentioned there are people who are on fixed incomes, who got houses, who've been owning these houses forever. Their, their income hasn't changed, their money hasn't changed, but their property taxes are going up. We have uh, inflation at an all-time high, and recently we just had some, some rates go up from the feds. That is going to hurt us all. We talk about low rates since the 85, 86, 87. Man, I just went to buy a Crunch Bar and it was $1.59 and it used to be less than a dollar. So come on people, let's think about what we're doing here. I've heard the word equitable and equity mentioned by a lot of people sitting on this dais. Think about it. Thank you. Madam City Attorney, what is your understanding of the Georgia Constitution as it relates to uh, the comments that were made? I believe that the speaker was making due process arguments, and they go to notice and the ability to be heard, which has occurred here. Uh, as the mayor outlined at the beginning, we've satisfied all the legal requirements for these hearings. Thank you very much. Rashida Edwards. It goes to the due process of all the people being heard. No bitch is deeper, deeper than being heard, you stinking heifer. But that's all right. But I got to ask together. Good evening, go. uh, Ben Adams, better known as Protocol. Uh, I live in Summerside neighborhood. Uh, my address is on the card. That should be sufficient enough for the city in the records. Um, I'm going to start this off by stating this here preamble that says to perpetuate. Ooh, look at that boy in that black and yellow. Mm. Proud of your boy, bro. Proud of your boy. Mm. That's a beautiful Perry. Look at that Laurel with that rooster. The principles of free government ensure justice to all, preserve peace, promote the interests and happiness of the citizens and of the family, and transmit the prosperity and enjoyment of liberty. We, the people of Georgia, relying upon the protection and the guidance of the Almighty God, do ordain and establish this Constitution. The Constitution of the State of Georgia that does bound each and every one of you on this dais to your job. Within this early, I had a nice little conversation speaking on those people on this dais being amenable to the people and providing for the better prosperity of the people, particularly here in the city of Savannah, Georgia. We are here once again speaking on this millage rate, the millage rate that stays the same when we know once again that property values went up, as stated earlier, by no, and I mean no fault of anyone in these underprivileged areas of their own. There were new neighbors, there were new buildings, new skyscrapers, some would even called, that were put in right in their backyard or in their front yard. Cause their property taxes to go up. These people can't afford it. We spoke time and time again. There's even an affordable housing task force that was put on by this particular administration. Someone tell me where this housing is affordable. I know a lot of moms that live in hotels. Hotels that now just received a increase on tax on how much they spend per room or bed we need to take this into accountability people our people are hurting i understand that the folk that are moving in that can afford these houses these homes these condos are a particular donor class to some people on this council but it doesn't do well by all of us it doesn't do well by the single mothers that are out here it doesn't do well by the families that are trying to make it Take into accountability that these people are struggling and you're there in this position, as most of you campaigned for, to make Savannah better for them. Thank you. Angelia Rawls. Mm. Standing ovations. That's what Jesus say. Standing ovation. All right, let's see. All right, guys. Um, yeah, that was that. Good times, good times. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoy going and setting the people right, making it do what it do. It's my favorite pastime. Anyway, guys, it's election time in the city. Please do the right thing, y'all. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Keisha Gibson called for mayor. Alder woman, post one, Rashida Edwards, post two, Alicia Blakely. District one, Benetta Lanier, it's already set in stone. District two, 
um, Tia Brightwell, District 3, Todd Rose, District 4, Flip Your Coin, District 5, Robert Bryan, District 6, Mike McCann. Go vote, y'all. Fix the city. All right, y'all. It's time for your boy to get on up out of here. This was fun. I appreciate y'all for coming in tonight. It was really real. Shouts out to my guests. Shouts out to Robert Bryant. We're going to get you in and some better internet service too, bro. We're going to get you some better internet service. You need goddamn better internet. So we're going to work on that. Um, Shouts out to Todd Rose for sticking it out, man. This internet was good. We're going to work on this here feedback thing too with this uh with these mics and when we're talking. We're going to cancel. We're going to get it all right. We're going to get it all right. All right. All right, guys. Um, It was fun. It was quite a pleasure. But now it is time for us. All right, guys. Um, it was fun it to was get up the pleasure out of here. But now it is time. Why is that playing? There's another one somewhere. No, I want that one. Oh, there it is. There it is, you sucker. All right, let's go. Yep, anyway, y'all, it's time for us to get up out of here. Um, appreciate y'all for flying with us on another Friday night flight. Um, this was fun. This was real. Again, shouts out to Todd. Shouts out to Robert. Good luck, guys, on Tuesday. We're going to make this thing happen, all right? All right, guys. Yeah, let's... Uh Go ahead and get up out of here, y'all. Have a blessed one, y'all. I'll see y'all next. I'll see y'all Tuesday. Special edition on Tuesday, man. It's it's uh selection watch night. Special edition on Tuesday. All right. I will see y'all on Tuesday. Let's get it. What what you had said? What you know had said when you said it? Yo.
understand it.